paycheck to pension. If you're ready to take your finances to the next level, you're in the right place. It's time to take control of your future, starting now, and we're doing it live. Hi, we're the Stidhams, and our goal is to help you get self-directed. It's the tax-free income that will shape your legacy. It's wealth, time, and the freedom you deserve. What you're about to learn will enable you to make confident and strategic moves. It means gaining complete control to invest in what you want when you want. We've helped thousands of people just like you. And if they can do it, you can too. So we hope you're ready because it's about time that your money started working for you. And we're so excited that you chose us to show you how. Starting right now. Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We have a very important topic. This is something that we've seen trending all over and we've covered it before. If you've been searching how to pay your mortgage off faster, if paying off your mortgage faster is a part of your uh, wealth strategy, then you're in for a treat. Not only can paying off your mortgage faster save you hundreds of thousands of dollars, there's no doubt about that. But what if we told you that it could be that it could also be the exact reason you end up poor? Shocking, right? Well, we know, and we've done the math. So tonight we're gonna dive into a case study where we had a couple call and they were kind of torn. One wanted to focus on retirement income and the other one wanted to pay off the mortgage. So we've got the results, but you'll have to stay tuned to see what happened. Hopefully it won't take three hours this time. No, it's definitely not gonna take three hours this time. We, we have, we whittled this down. So we are, we are honoring your time too and ours. So, and I think you guys are really gonna, really gonna appreciate it. So, hey, yeah. hey, we got some, we got some folks in the house. So it's, it's been an interesting, uh, I'll call it few months because uh, this is the time when a lot of my original, uh, I'll call it premium finance strategy, MPI related clients are stepping into this space where the famed relock feature is kicking in. And I, so a lot of, I've been having just, a, it's weird. The number of conversations I've been having around, hey, it's year three and I'd like to do something different with my account. Cause I'm not sure that it's doing what it was supposed to be doing. And <laughs> it coupled with, you know, should I pay off my mortgage early to be able to put me in a better position to be able to retire coupled with, uh, you know, should I have a first position HELOC compared to a 30 year mortgage? Like there's just, there's so much, there's so much. And hopefully today uh, we kind of break down kind of what makes sense. And we're not going to talk about a first position HELOC today because I can absolutely make that argument whether or not uh, one is better than the other, but we're not going to do that. We're going to live in this world of mortgage. And the question is, is that is paying off that mortgage early an actual retirement strategy? Is it? Well, for a lot of people, is it? for a lot of people, it it's uh it's a good possibility. But I think what you're going to learn tonight is, and I think everybody's aware of this, that the decisions that you make today can greatly impact your future and your future goals. <clears throat> and so that's essentially what our channel is about: is helping you become educated so that the decisions that you make today will benefit the future. You will think uh this today's 2023 version of you for making the decisions that you made can you imagine going back 10 years with what you know now going back 10 years uh from today and and thanking that version of yourself for making different decisions so that you'd be in a different place today right i mean that's just everybody probably would do that and I, that's exactly what we're doing today imagine that you just went back in time and you are learning something for the first time today that is going to benefit you um in the future not just 10 years but beyond so uh, you want to jump in and get started yeah we can do that and just let's be let's be clear 10 years is two compound cycles at minimum two compound cycles saying you that's two times that your money would have doubled that if you could go back and change, that means that's that many more compound cycles you would have to be able to help your money grow. Like it's powerful. powerful. Yeah, it really is. Okay, I can't see which which stingers on here, but it'll just be like a, a random grab bag. We just let's we'll be surprise surprised. us both. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hold on a second. All right. <clears throat> All right. There we go. 
go. All right, tell us what you got for us. Yep. So kind of, as always, kind of just to set the stage a little bit before I jump into the example, uh, I did want to kind of just readdress kind of what it is we do and why it is we do what we do. And it kind of starts out here. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions related to, hey, I'm just here for the pitch. Hey, I'm just here to understand what it is you guys are trying to sell me. I'm not sure what's going on with your with your uh, with your channel, with your live. But, hey, I'm just here to kind of understand what it is you're trying to sell me. And hopefully for those of you who've been with us a while, that's not the objective here. The objective is not to um, sell you something. The objective is to educate. The objective is kind of lay out on the table. um, What are the options available? What the message that has been traditionally provided to us, what we've been conditioned to believe to be true and just kind of peeling back the layers to help understand, hey, is there a better option? And the other one is, hey, this must be a scam. I've been seeing a lot of the like life insurance is a scam. These actions that I'm taking can't be true. And that's not it either. The thought process behind is it a scam is I think when you ask that question, you need to kind of step back and take a look. Where are the real scams? Meaning uh, I I appeal back a lot of layers around traditional retirement planning. Like I think you would agree that someone telling you the best thing you can do for yourself is to defer your taxes till for a future date. Hey, don't pay your taxes today, even though you know what the tax rate is. Defer your taxes to a future date and in the future, you're going to be allowed to have the IRS charge you whatever the tax rate is at the moment. Um, To me, that's the real scam. So it's kind of understanding, hey, what are these financial institutions, these banks, these insurance companies doing? And is there a way to kind of take action the same way they've been taking action against you since the start of time? And, you know, and I think the outside of that is, um, again, not only is this a scam or not, but what are these, what are the other solutions? Meaning what are the other options? Are there any other options available to you outside of those traditional retirement planning options? Are there any other uh, options, whether it's uh, leveraging your home to be able to uh, invest in your future, um, owning and taking control of your own retirement accounts to be able to invest in what you want when you want? Hey, uh, I understand life insurance. I understand that there's this thing called infinite banking, but is there a way to take a life insurance product and convert it into something that can actually build wealth for you? So it's also just kind of explaining what those options are. And then that last piece is my favorite question around why are we here what's the true goal what's the true objective as to um when when we meet what's the true objective behind where it is you're trying to go is it is it really debt elimination like when we're talking about velocity banking is it really around debt elimination or is it around something different is there an ultimate goal there that may have something to do with your wtf moment putting yourself in a position to generate wealth be in a position to be able to uh, control your time. And once you're able to control that time, really actually go for what that true freedom point might be, which which ultimately means being able to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, whenever that time uh, presents itself. And so these actions that we like to take, this isn't, you know, we talk a lot about velocity banking, but the objective isn't just to do velocity banking. The objective is to use velocity banking to get where? to put yourself in a better position to be able to produce income. So whether that's a first position HELOC, using infinite banking or a self-directed retirement account, the whole objective is just simply to put yourself in a position to be able to have your WTF moment. And the last piece here is, I am not sharing anything with you that I'm not currently doing. These are the actions that we have. These are the, I'll call it the different pieces to the puzzle that allow, allowed us to um, uh, put, to rather, put together the right combination to be able to generate our WTF moment. Now, are we 100% there? Absolutely not. But are we on the path? Absolutely. And it's through the form of velocity banking to free up cash flow, using that cash flow to actually start an infinite banking process, leveraging my self-directed 401k to be able to borrow against it, to be able to put ourselves in a position to be able to pay down debt faster. And again, leverage that cash flow to ultimately convert our mortgage into a first position HELOC and then take that equity from our home and start dumping it into our MPI plan to be able to generate wealth. 
Like this is literally the, the combination that we've put together to be able to execute. And hopefully what you take out of this is what's yours? Is there an opportunity for you to build your own combination of uh, processes and strategies to be able to achieve your goal? And if you don't have one, you absolutely can adopt this one. Get self-directed. That's really all this is about. And so today's example is around, um, it's a kind of a combination of calls that I've gotten, but this is an absolute, um, uh, I'll call it example, a real life example of a conversation that I've had with a client over this last week. And it starts out like this. Um, I've got a client. She started with me about three years ago. And the whole objective is to um, kind of walk through my, my relationship with that client over these three years. So, so it starts out, client name is, is Sasha. Her age at this point is around 32 years of age. So she's about 32 years old. And she came to me with one kind of focus. Hey, I don't want to work for the rest of my life. I don't want to wait till age 65 before I can start taking my uh, retirement income and I'm looking for security. And so in the process of that conversation, um, you know, she had kind of walked me through some of the things that she'd already done uh, again with a, with an objective of being able to fire her job at some point and retire with income for life. So what she was looking for, what she had been looking for bef before she had reached out to me was where could this happen? Like, what are the vehicles that she could take on that would allow her to put herself in a position to be able to retire early? And I don't, you know, I'm sure you just like, just like we have, we've been scrolling a lot through social media. There's a lot of side hustles out there. There's a lot of different opportunities for you to be able to make income or, or uh, take the Dave Ramsey uh, approach. And um, uh, in addition to your 40 hour a week job. What are you doing secondary to also produce enough income so that you can put yourself in a position to be able to potentially retire early if that exists? And the biggest piece around that, though, is a lot of these activities incur risk. And her objective in our conversation was really around security. Like, I get it. I could go make more money in, with side hustles. But what are the options available that don't involve risk? And... When I walked her through MPI and we were talking through what MPI is and what it is not and how a premium finance strategy can help her grow her income, she had some concerns. And a lot of those concerns was around, hey, when I talked to my dad about this, he had he had no idea. My dad is used to this traditional way of uh, investing. And, and this seems like, um, you know, because I haven't heard much about it, like, is is this a viable option? Seems too new. And it, she, you know, having a traditional retirement account, she's got financial advisors in her ear going, you know what, just dump more into your company 401k. That's how you're going to get there. But again, if her goal is to retire early, how do you get there with a traditional retirement account, right? Yeah, because her parents couldn't even aren't it didn't work for them. They're just now finding that out. Right. And so during our consult, um, just like I do with everyone else, it always starts with what's the goal? Like, what's the honest goal? And when we got through all of the, you know, bills and working and all of those things, the true goal is I want to be able to fire my employer. The true goal is early retirement. Right. What are the options available to be able to achieve early retirement? And what I really loved about uh, this client is she was willing to go all in to achieve it. And so after breaking down MPI and answering a lot of those questions, I even met with her dad to kind of help him understand what this vehicle is and what it isn't and how it's very different from a traditional retirement account. She went all in. And um, so sweetheart, if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is show you in the calculator what she ended up doing. What she ended up doing was she ended up putting away uh, 10K as a lump sum and $1,000 a month. Again, went, went all in. And she's still contributing to her traditional retirement account, but the objective was um, to put away ten thousand dollars a year. I'm sorry, ten thousand dollar lump sum one uh, one time, so spread over twenty four months. Five thousand in year one, five thousand in year two, and a thousand dollars a month at age thirty two. She's pretty powerful. So in doing so, what I walked her through, and her and her dad, what I walked her through was at age thirty two, putting away ten thousand um, dollars, five thousand in year one, five thousand in year two, would put you in a position. I'll put her in a position to be able to produce 
$271,000 tax-free for the rest of her life. She would have $2.7 million by the age of 65. And obviously a death benefit associated with that somewhere around almost $5 million. And her dad was shocked that there's not a 401k in this world that could provide that. And one other piece to note, that's at age 65. As I mentioned, her objective was to retire early. So with an objective to retire early, we back this number down to 55. So at, by age 55, we're talking about 111,000 tax free for the rest of her life. With a projected cash value of right around a million bucks. So by age 55, four years before she would be allowed to retire from her 40 hour week job, she would be in position. She would be a millionaire and have the ability to bring home $111,000 tax free for life. And so we headed down this path three years ago at age 32 and she was, she was all in. And she was set too. Absolutely. And, and she, and she understood what, she, what, what her future was going to look like, which is important because a lot of people don't, they just are kind of throwing in each month. So then what happened? Well, Oops. if you jump back over to the other side of the board at, at age 35, she gets married and this is present day. She's gotten married. She's now eight. So again, this started out at age 32. She is now 35 years of age. And I got a call and that call was, I know I've been kind of funding my MPI premium finance strategy for the last two years. Cause again, this is the start of the third year. She's now 35. She's just gotten married. And she said, Hey, uh, with these new responsibilities that, you know, I now have, and it's, I now have to change my last name. There are actions that need to be, be taken as it relates to beneficiaries and all of this stuff that needs to happen. She goes, I think I might need to reduce that thousand dollars a month that I've been contributing. And so my ask was, okay, if you're thinking you're wanting to be able to, you're thinking you're needing to reduce that thousand dollars a month. My ask was, why is that? What's going on? Like, what are some, some more of the details? And the truth behind that is she was having a hard time explaining MPI and why she was putting away a thousand dollars a month to her brand new husband. And this is being meant to be a little bit, I'll call it cheeky or a little bit facetious. But the truth is how many people, how many of us, when we start our new relationship, we have these questions or there's these, these role, these role plays of who kind of controls income and who kind of controls how money is brought into the relationship. And what are those actions that we take as a couple to be able to put ourselves in a different position and think about it. She's got this vehicle that nobody's really heard about that she's putting away a thousand dollars a month. She's in the start of year three and the man that she just married is going, Hey, um, I'm used to these traditional vehicles of, of right. investing. I'm used to these traditional vehicles of uh, putting money away for retirement. What is this MPI thing? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to tell everybody I made these slides and I'm, I got a little petty when I heard her story and here's why because it is common to get in this situation. She made a confident, educated decision, and he's coming in with a lot of programming, right, for what he thinks are the best decisions. But oftentimes women get in, the, women specifically, get in the, in the situation where they feel good, they feel educated about their decisions, but simply because we're women, suddenly, somehow, we must not be able to make financial decisions and somebody else, just because they technically technically are the head of the household or something like some leadership role that that they subscribe to maybe she subscribes to it too but it doesn't mean that she didn't make an educated decision right. so as she's trying to explain to him even my dad was like yes this is a good idea he was like mm, I don't know. I need to decide if you made a good decision or not. That's up for me to decide because I'm a man. And so that's where this call came from. The truth is that's where this call came from or it she is. wouldn't have even needed to call in the first place. She would not have reached so, out if there was any, wasn't a question as to whether or not what she was doing was the right thing to do. Exactly. So this is my little clap back. Advo 
my hashtag advocacy for my girl who made a good financial decision and then had to go and prove that it was a good financial decision and the amount of work it took to break it all down. Now, Donnell's different because this is why I wasn't on the call because I think that conversation would have looked different if it was me, right? Because I was all triggered. Like, what? Why, why can't he just listen to what she's saying? But you're very kind and you approach things in a different way. And I really appreciate how you approached it. And so I'm excited for everyone to see how you broke this down. I, but I just wanted to clarify that all of the petty stuff that I added in here is me. <laughs> it's me. And so, and so you also have to step back because this is also could be role reversed. It's really about conditioning. It's about yeah. conditioning around uh, what what our rules and obligations are as it relates to money. And if you've been conditioned to believe that your company's retirement account is is, the, is your path, if you've been conditioned to believe that, you know what, this mortgage that I have, the main objective is to pay that mortgage off first and then start focusing on my retirement. A lot of this is conditioning and it's very difficult to push us off center. It is very difficult to push us off this hill that we are willing to die on based off how we've been educated over time. And yeah. she spent two and a half years or two years with me. He hasn't. So uh, it's, yeah. it's understandable that, and on top of that, what I usually tell clients is this, it is not your job to understand how this process works. When you have questions, my ask of you is just simply call me. My ask yeah. is, hey, when you're wondering what's going on, let's talk about it. And being in a new relationship and trying to, um, um, you know, also be a good partner, it's very difficult from her perspective to have to explain something that she's never had to explain before. And so when you're telling someone, you know what, I'm putting away a thousand dollars a month into this life insurance policy, uh, this policy, that sounds weird. It sounds weird. Yeah, well, it does sound weird because this is a strategy that only the e extremely wealthy could leverage before. And it, no one's talking about it because it's not as profitable for people to talk about it. Or you'd see it all over YouTube and everywhere else if it was profitable for people to uh to tell people about these strategies, but you hear a whole lot about what is profitable. Right. They're out there with a pulpit about what's profitable. And then because you hear it so much and so many times, you start to believe that this obviously must be the way because so many people are just drilling down on these particular strategies and they're not talking about these other ones. So I don't know, sounds sus, nobody's really talking about it. Well, who's talking about it? That's what you need to ask yourself. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna. No, you're good, you're good. And I, th and I think the piece also, you have to remember what happened last year. So the call that I received was around er, late May or something like that. And but what happened to everyone last year? We went over this. What happened last year to everyone is we all lost. What was it? Two trillion. Th no, I'm sorry. Three trillion dollars in our retirement account. So coming off the fact that inflation is super high, the market was down. Hey, and I'm just I'm putting I'm sorry, spouse. I'm putting away a thousand dollars a month into this life insurance policy. I understand we've got bills. I understand inflation's high, but this is important. I can't tell you why it's important, but it's important. So it started to kind of see doubt, right? Started right. to see doubt. And her number one focus was on security. She wanted to make sure that she was going to be good, especially after watching your parents put make the sacrifice to invest all of their careers and then learn oh whoops it's not going to be enough only at the very end now they don't have the time to leverage so she's trying to do the right thing so the call i received the specific call that i received was hey this year since i'm at the start of year three i need to stop putting a thousand dollars a month into my premium finance strategy because we want to pay off our mortgage early the goal is to pay off our mortgage in 15 years. And so this thousand dollars a month can do better going towards that mortgage. That was the call that I had received. And my response to that was, OK, let's talk about it. And again, but where where, where was that seated and why was that even a thing? Because somewhere we have been conditioned to understand that if we take the next 15, 30 years, 12 years, 11 years, however long it takes to pay off our home, that somehow there is an advantage to that that can help us gain more wealth. When the truth is, what does paying off your what do you win when you pay off your home? If we all had a magic wand and our home was paid off today, 
what is the benefit? What do we win? Other than, yeah, you no longer have that mortgage. Other than that, what do you win? Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay, there's a few comments across platforms. They're all asking the same question. LinkedIn, Sri's asking, Brenda's asking on uh, YouTube, and Let's there's a couple it. other. It's it's pretty much the same thing because I can't bring up the LinkedIn comments, obviously. Uh, it's interesting that those discussions didn't precede. Man, we hit it there. Says, I still don't <laughs> understand why not. Um, why not bring the person into the conversation a little earlier? Were they not open? Well, Sri, remember, she got this before she was married. She got it two and a half, three years ago. How long they'd been together. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't I didn't get, you know, I, I'm not I'm not one to to get in people's business. But Brenda, to your You're point, spot on. And we have some questions about HELOCs and stuff, but I think we can get mm -hmm. there because we're going to have this this moment where I think that would be a, a perfect place to ask that question. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to make sure we get through this part just in terms of why I was just completely triggered. They could have had these conversations before marriage. There is literally a lot of people who experience those initial uh, courting kind of conversations. And once the, you know, once the wedding is over, once the, the candles are blown out and all of the decorations are cleaned up confetti that yeah the confetti and the spotlights and all that stuff is gone then it becomes a different um scenario because at in the moment those people are dating now this isn't just men this is women too they, Again, there they is a role too the gender role here i don't think matters I yeah. think there, I think there is a um, um, a conditioned gender role around finances that we all believe. But mm -hmm. I, 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 if if I'm the math guy, or if you're the math guy, I don't think it matters. If you walk into this relationship and you learn that I'm putting away a thousand dollars a month into a life insurance policy, you have no idea about, and we've got this mortgage that we could pay off sooner. I think there's going to be a conversation there. But I to Brenda's point. I believe we would have had that conversation well before we went down this path. Okay, but but two. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Two seconds, because when you first, we didn't have, we weren't doing velocity banking when oh, no we doubt. were dating. No doubt. Right. There was many years that we just had a regular strategy. It was like four hundred one k and right. and these conversations. But then, like self directed. Uh, 401ks and strategy started to enter the scene and, and then you were like hold on a second and it was just where are those rabbit holes when we saw right. a hole we went down we learned more right the only right. way out is through let's go learn when you came to me though and you were like hey i'm gonna do this thing called velocity banking using credit got a new credit card gonna do this thing it's gonna be awesome and i was like what are you even talking about it did not make sense to me so i could all I could see where he might have just been like with the it information. sounds crazy with the information that he has that she, what she's saying is like, are you OK? Because this does not sound like a thing. Right. And then you're like, I'm going to turn our house into a giant credit card. And I was like, OK, I'm just going to have to trust that you 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 sound so convinced that this is a thing. When I saw what you did, though. That was the moment where I was like, first of all, I was like, um, is this legal what you're doing? Because I don't hear anybody else doing this. Like, so is this like some sort of like hack gray area or something you found? You were like, no, this is completely legal. It, you can absolutely do this right out in the open, Angelique. Everybody can be doing this today. And I was like, why aren't more people doing it then? And believe me, you guys, I've been trying to get him to get out here and talk about this for years. Um, so... Just glad that you're out here talking about now. But when my point is, when you first brought this I, these ideas into our relationship, there was a whole lot of trust that we had already established for me to be like, okay, it sounds crazy, but I'm going to trust you. If they're just, just married, they may not have built up that amount of trust yet. And so I am going to say that. I still feel a little petty and triggered about the situation just based off of principle and common behavior with this type of thing. But um, but that's it. I will say I can't understand where some of this stuff sounds crazy. But in addition, again, not because I did my homework, I felt like I became a subject matter expert of the subject. And so I didn't have a problem helping educate and helping learn and being able to share with you what the, those details are. But imagine me not having that, that, that backstory. 
Imagine me not having that research. And so from her perspective, she knew what this was the day she started contributing to it. She's just been, hey, paying herself first. That's all she's been doing. Paying yeah. herself first and hoping and praying that everything was going to be okay. And then you get challenged on, wait a minute, why are you paying yourself first? Okay. And Shri says, to, I, I like her point. She says, yes, if it sounds crazy, but that's why you're there to explain and if you can explain it and it makes sense and I'm the one who's not understanding it, then I need more understanding, not, exactly. no, I'm going to shut you down and say, exactly. no, this is not what you're going to do. I'm going to make a decision like that. So, <laughs> you, I mean, she's Sounds like, Sounds like there's married? a few other people triggered. Right. You married someone <laughs> and you don't trust them enough to tell them about how you're investing for the future, <laughs> then you may not want to marry them. Like Ooh. I, I hear you on this, but there's, this is one of the number one causes for divorce. It is money. It is. And, I, and just so we're clear, this is the call that I received. I'm not making this up. This is the exact call. I think I need to stop putting this thousand dollars a month into the secure compound interest account because it might be best that we pay off our mortgage. Yeah. And, 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 and let's be honest, he's not wrong that you wouldn't save a couple hundred thousand dollars at least in in paying off your mortgage faster so okay all right well you we'll said it you said it yeah we'll go back so so what i just I'm wanted to go back, back okay so you can yep, see yep. My and so to your point um what he had determined was if we put this thousand dollars a month into our mortgage we could potentially save two hundred and sixty thousand dollars on our mortgage so, so you're telling me, wife, that saving $260,000 in a mortgage is somehow better, I'm sorry, somehow worse than you putting $1,000 a month into some life insurance policy that you yeah. can't even explain? Like, are because you kidding me? It's for the future. <laughs> right? But I mean, that's the dilemma. Yeah, and right. wh what do you do? Like, this is, this is honest. What do you do? I'm standing there telling you $260,000 save if we knock out this, this mortgage. And, and I'm like, uh, you know what? That sounds good, but I'm talking about uh, millions of dollars here. Not show the me two, the 260. Exactly. You're saying it, but show me, and show I, me that the, show me that a thousand dollars a month inside of some life insurance product is going to produce a million dollars. Yeah. And so she was, she was, she had a, a big dilemma because this is her marriage, right? She's like, I'm not going to give up my marriage for $260,000. Like the price is wrong, Bob. Bruh. Not going to do it. So when I got this call, and this is through text, by the way, uh, when I got this text, I said, I intentionally block time on my calendar. Like I have blocks there that you cannot schedule. Yeah. And I have them there specifically for reasons like this. And my response was, when you have time to get on a Zoom? And she gave me a date and we jumped on one because what I wanted to do is what I, I wanted to one, help her understand how to have this conversation with her spouse. And we've, we've done a live on this as well, where we kind of talk through how do you introduce your spouse to non-traditional, I'll call it saving or non-traditional investing or non-traditional wealth building. How do you do that? Cause it's a challenge. And so we got on a zoom and I start every, every consult the same way. What's the goal? Right. Because when we talked, the goal was not pay off your home in 15 years. And so when I asked her, what was the goal? She goes, no, the goal is not still the goal. The goal is to retire early. So if you don't mind, pull up the calculator so we can talk through again, the retire early part. Yep. There you go. So again, the goal was to retire early. So at age 32, putting away, again, a $10,000 lump sum, which is 5,000 in year one, 5,000 in year two, and a thousand dollars a month by age 55, she would have 111,000 tax free for life. And her comment was, yes, that is absolutely the goal that has not changed, but is there a way we can still accomplish this and not put in that thousand dollars a month. And here's what I told her. I said, well, you do realize where you are, right? Meaning we're in year three. And for those of you who have, have been on this journey with me as it relates to using a premium finance strategy, what happens at year three? So year three, she's now 35. At year three, what happens inside of this product? Well, at year three, your contributions 
Again, contributed 17,000 in year one, 17,000 in year two, plus 12,000 in year three. So in year three, she would have put in $46,000. Also starting in year three, she would have added leverage. Leverage of 17,000. So she contributed 46, leverage of 17, the 3% growth on this dollar amount plus the 6% growth on, on average 6% growth on this dollar amount produces cash value, liquid cash of 47 grand. So she's at the start of this year three, which means she is, she now has this ability to add $17,000 of leverage that she does not have to contribute, that she does not have to contra uh, qualify for, that she does not have to uh, fill out some, I'll call it, um, uh, have her credit check and fill out some application to be able to access this 17 grand. The obligation that she has with the life insurance company says because she funded her policy in year one and year two, now starting in year three, you're able to leverage everything from year one. And that's a total of $17,000. $17, and I want to make sure this is clear though. We are at the start of year three. So this is saying we are at the end of year three at the start of year three is when we add the 17,000. I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah, so, which, and that's when she called. Absolutely. And so my point to this is, okay, if you wanted to stop contributing this thousand dollars, you absolutely can. You can stop contributing this thousand dollars at year three because you have $17,000 available. And that $17,000 can be your annual contribution. So if you wanted to, you absolutely have the ability <clears throat> to take $1,000 a month and not contribute that. And we can convert instead of doing $1,000 a month out of your pocket, we could take $1,000 a month, which is 12 grand out of this number. And that be your annual contribution, which would leave $5,000 available to you to also continue to compound. So this does not hurt this product because you want to adjust your contribution at year three. Now, does the same growth occur? Meaning if, if you do that, does this look the same at age 55? No, it doesn't. You know, it would not be $111,000 tax free for life, but this product is still growing and it's still accumulating um, income exponentially, still the same 0% floor, still leverage being added, even though you are no longer putting in that $1,000 a month. So what I wanted to make clear to her was she's at a point in this process where she can actually take that action. If yeah. the goal is to not contribute $1,000, there's no harm in doing so. This is a vehicle that would allow her the flexibility of doing that. How many other vehicles would do that? How many other vehicles you know of that you can contribute to that there's an additional $17,000 added that would take the place of your traditional monthly contribution? That's all I wanted to make sure it's clear. Yep. So we walked through it and I explained to her what year three looks like. I explained to her what the goal was or re-explained and her thought was, okay. Okay, so now let's kind of explain this to my husband. Let's walk him through what this looks like over time. Let's walk him through, hey, there's actually an additional $17,000 available in this product that you're unclear about. So we step through how money grows inside of this product. I won't, I, I can spend that time now, but we don't have to. If there's questions about how money grows inside of this product, I absolutely am prepared to do so. But the key point is this, in year one, she contributed here, I'll write it. In year one, she contributed 17K. That was a $5,000 lump sum plus $12,000 annually. In year two, she contributed 17K. And which means in total, she contributed 34. And now starting in year three, she's able to leverage an additional 17,000. But I actually pulled up her physical account. And what I shared with her is, the calculator shows you're going to be adding an additional 17,000 to your account, an additional 17,000 of leverage added to your account to help it grow starting this year. But when I took a physical look in her account, that 17,000 was not 17,000. It was actually 18,500. 
What that means is, even though the calculator said she would have 17,000 available, she actually has $18,500 $18, available to then redirect or re contribute into this policy on top of her traditional $1,000 a month. Like a snowball. Absolutely. So again, this is leveraged money. So there's a cost to this, lever this leveraged money being used. But the moral of the story is it's leveraged money that is $1,500 more than what the calculator stated. And here's why this is important. What has happened in the two years that she's been contributing? She started in 2021, put in $17,000, $5,000 lump sum, $1,000 a month. We got the full complement of growth over that first year. Meaning I, I talk about an average of 7%, it was actually 10%. But then in year two, what happened to everyone in year two? I mentioned it earlier. In year two, the market crashed. So in this product, when the market crashes, what happens? So let's kind of talk about that a little bit. And I just want to show it visually. Okay, we have some people that um, are waiting for the example to the case study to be over so they can see their numbers but i Not just want to say this if you can imagine what your numbers are so that you can see then then when you see what your what your numbers look like you'll understand why they look that way so absolutely this is, this is still good this is still helpful absolutely so again in 2021 she made 10 percent on her money the S and P, the, and again, it's a cap on the growth, right? A lot of people argue that this doc, this this uh, this vehicle has a cap on the growth of your money, and that cap is ten percent. So in year in the twenty twenty one, she received ten percent on her seventeen thousand dollars that was contributed. But in twenty twenty two, the market crashed. The market lost the S and P five hundred specifically lost what twenty four percent, which means she didn't lose twenty four percent. Now, had this not been capped, she would have. But she didn't lose 24%. She lost nothing. She lost the money that was used to buy the call option, but the growth on the money that she had never left. So even with a zero crediting year, here's my point. Even with a zero crediting year, she made no money in 2022. She still did better than what the calculator states. The calculator states she's adding $17,000 of leverage. She's actually leveraging 18.5. She's at, she's leveraging more at the start of year three than what we're stating in this calculator from an under promise over deliver perspective. And this is even with a year where she made zero dollars. This is very important. Yep. So. Okay, so she was like, you better come look at this. Well, this is where, okay, I hear you, Donnell. I hear that's how much money she has available. And you've confirmed that, yes, we can stop contributing this $1,000. What I want to do, what he said, is, hey, I want to take this $1,000 a month and I want to put it on a mortgage. And I want to prove that us putting this money on our mortgage is actually better than what this vehicle could possibly do. Like, I hear you. I hear that she's done great over these three years. That's awesome. But what does it look like? What would it look like? Because I still haven't heard anything that says I can do anything better than the saving of the 260000 or whatever that interest amount was if they pay off their mortgage early. And yeah. so we did a side-by-side -side comparison. And bottom line is what I told her was, again, I'm a math guy, so let's talk about it. I have no problem laying out what this looks like. Let's take that thousand dollars a month and let's pay off that mortgage, however long it takes. And let's, let's compare that to what a premium finance strategy would state. Yeah. Yeah. Donnell, so, can you please do the math for him? That's what she was saying. Yep. Like she's tired of hearing about it. And so there's a lot of words here. And I put this here so that, as the comments, uh oh, I uh -oh. might have to reboot this thing. Um, but as the comments start to come in around what is or isn't happening inside this vehicle, I wanted to put up the actual steps that are taken. And so I stepped through them. Can, Let's can see if it, it allows me. Is it? Yeah, it is. 
Is it gone? Okay. It is. Are you have so? To, do you have to reboot it? Yep. We'll take All right. Why you do? Why you do that? I think this is a good time because I mm-hmm. think these steps are important. This is also the math comparison. So it's like, oh, cliffhanger. <laughs> We're gonna get there though. That's this is the this was good. Um, taking the moment. First of all, I have to bring up this comment because it's hilarious. You say all the time, this stuff is not sexy. Brenda's like, I love leverage. Tell him how sexy it is, okay? <laughs> because it is financial security is. Almost it lost. is attractive and it makes you feel so much better about yourself knowing that the decisions that you're making are going to make sure that you're okay. That is absolutely a, a part of, of my self-care. Okay. Um, okay. So then here's some more questions we have um, based on the calculator. Are, are you back? Uh, yeah, but let, let's do, do a few questions though. Okay. Uh, let's go all the way back here. We have Divine. She says, with the first position HELOC, what interest, what instrument are you suggesting investing 20K on? So uh, I think you have options, uh, but I have yet to see a vehicle like a premium finance strategy, also called MPI. This calculator that I'm putting here, if you're putting $20,000 a year into a vehicle like this, over let's give it 15, 20 years, it will do some amazing things for you. Now, is this the only option? It's not. Uh, Are there other vehicles? There are, Uh, but I'm a math guy. And the whole point and purpose of doing this is to produce income, which vehicle produces the maximum amount of income. And before you make a decision, the key is let's take a look at all of them. Let's lay it all out there on the table. Take $20,000 and dump it into the Vanguard calculator. What does it do? What does $20,000 a, a year do inside of an ETF, S&P 500 or some other uh, index fund? What does $20,000 a, a year do if you were to put it into real estate? Like, I think these, this is the, the, for me, it's all about laying out what those options are, where those opportunities are, and let's just do a side-by-side comparison. And so what I am referencing is putting that uh, $20,000 a year into a vehicle like what you're seeing here. Okay. Alondia wants to know, do you have any recommendations where to get a HELOC from? So, um, I, and thank you for that because I am not a bank. I'm not a mortgage broker. This is not what I do. Um, I actually, the place we got our first position HELOC from was not recommended. Like this is not where all the data stated we should get our HELOC from. But the reason I did was because this Bank of America happens to be the bank I've been banking with since I was 17, 18 years old. So it just made sense for me. Um, There are teams out there that can help you through this process that can walk you through what those vehicles are, what that first position HELOC uh, or where you should get that first position HELOC from all the way down to the name of the person at the branch who can help you. Um, and I, I think we've put that up on the up on the site. You can absolutely go there and kind of get all of those questions answered for you. But I do know PNC has a great product. I do know Navy Federal has a pretty decent product. Like there's some there's some uh, we had a, a, a comment from what was it? First Savings Bank, I believe. Yeah. Uh, First Savings Bank reached out to us directly because they have a first position HELOC that is designed for velocity banking. So there are some great options out there. Uh, but I think if you want the service, the white, I call it the um, uh, white glove uh, support. If you want the white glove support to help you understand where the best place is to get a HELOC, we can provide that information to you with uh, no problem. So. Yeah, and I'll go while we're while he, we get back to things, I'll go grab that and put it in the in the comments or in the description of this particular live stream. Yeah, no problem. Cause it, I do know they are in the um, comments of a lot of our other live streams because we get this question all the time. So that's yeah. And what are the potential fees he was asking? Fees associated with the first position HELOC? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, um, one of the cool parts about it is whenever you, if, cause we're talking about one of two things, either we're talking about a purchase with a first position HELOC, or we're talking about a refinance with the first position HELOC. But regardless, the the biggest piece for me is the difference in closing costs related to a mortgage compared to closing costs related to a first position HELOC. It, it's a night and day difference. I, th- I always say this because I don't have the exact number. It was less than a thousand bucks for us to refinance from our mortgage to a first position HELOC. And we're talking about, a, what is it, $400,000 home? 
So the traditional closing costs around a $400,000 home or what? 20 grand compared to a thousand bucks. Like it's yeah. just, it's just night and day. So what are the fees? You have your standard closing costs associated with it, but a, the closing costs for a HELOC are fractional compared to uh, our fraction of the cost compared to um, uh, the refinancing of a mortgage. Now, the other fees associated, it's a line of credit. So you've got your interest rate associated with that line of credit. And most HELOCs, most first position HELOCs are variable, which means that interest rate can change. Some first position HELOCs have a ceiling, some don't. Um, so which means that interest rate can continue to grow as long as you have that uh, HELOC. You also have different levers you can pull, like locking in that uh, rate. So there's I'd say it's no different than any other fee associated with a line of credit. OK, yeah, he mm -hmm. was saying it would be a refinance. So mm -hmm. so that's good. OK, so um, Divine was her follow up to her answer was, is it a whole life policy? And we are um, I think what we're going to get into is explaining more about what that is uh, in just a second. It, it is not a, a whole life policy. You're not on camera, by the way. Yeah, I know. But c you guys can hear me right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can. But no, you're right. It's not a whole life policy. It's a, it's an, in, it's a, the, the foundation of this product is an index universal life insurance policy, IUL. So why? Why is this an IUL and not a whole life policy? What are the differences? Because they're both permanent life insurance. They both have similar fee structures. Um, they both use the general fund to generate income. So they are very similar in that nature, meaning they're permanent life insurance based products. But why an IUL and not a whole life policy, especially when you talk about velocity, uh, infinite banking or because most of us have been educated to do infinite banking using whole life. And it's one reason. It's one reason why a, an IUL is used for a product like this versus anything else. And it's the 0% floor. And what that means is there is a contractual guarantee that the money you put into this product. Again, let's walk through Sasha's first two years. In year one, she got the full 10% growth on her money. In year two, because of that 0% floor, it prevented her from losing all of that growth from year one at year two because that 0% floor prevented that from happening. So that 0% floor produces security. And at my age, being 50 years old, what I don't have time for is market recovery. Right. Everyone else who has a traditional retirement account, what happened to their retirement plan in 2022? They lost anywhere from 17 to 41%. I don't have that kind of time. So it's about security. So the reason an IUL is used is because of security. Yeah, William Smith says, I've never heard of MPI. Are the returns based on the market just like any other retirement account? I just joined the live stream. If I missed it, let me know. I, I think you're actually going to go into a deep dive. I want to bring up Lolo's comment um, here because I think it's a good segue back into the story because I want to finish this. It's important. Mm -hmm. When the market crashed, and she has good questions. I love her questions. When the market crashed, I understand that she didn't lose any money in the bucket. However, didn't she technically lose some money because she had to still pay for the fees of the policy? Absolutely. And I will dig into those details. Um, and I would say, let's hold that question till I get to the uh, section where I actually, I'm going to step through what happens in year one, two, and at the start of year three for you. So I'm going to use Sasha's example and just uh, methodically step through what exactly happened each year. Okay, but right now we're going to compare. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah, I said if, it. Okay, Go, all right. So what we're going to do is just simply compare. Um, his thought process is I want to take this $1,000 a month and put it into my mortgage, pay off my mortgage early. And her perspective is if we continue down this path, what does this look like from a cash flow, from an income generating perspective? Um, and we're going to put a few years to it. Go ahead. Yeah, and also um, that's my thousand dollars. I've already been spending it there, so now you don't just get to swoop in and decide to spend it somewhere else. Where's your thousand dollars going in towards the mortgage on extra things? Advocate for your girl. I'm just saying, like you know, I'm sure he's got contributing to his 401k and all of the things that he thinks make sense. But all of a sudden, it's her, it's her money that needs to be start making doing different things. Our so, money. Hmm our money yeah no he thinks it's our money that's what i'm saying where we should be thinking it's ours our no, money it, it's true but that's where she's calling you going technically i guess it is our money but 
Anyway, point is, I know, I just, I know where you're headed. I I'm just, just feel like there was some undertone. Just poking the bear. Of, that's all. Yeah. Just poking just, the bear. <laughs> and I'm usually <laughs> poked today because I'm super triggered by this conversation. I just, <laughs> so many women are faced with this. And that is just, not just in, at home with their partners, at work too. Right. Just the fact that like when a man says something, all of a sudden it must be true. But if you had just said the exact same damn thing, then all of a sudden it'll be like, oh, like you just planted the seed and then some some toxic masculine dude is going to be like, you know what I just thought of? No, you didn't. That's what I just said. You did not think of that. That was what I said. But we don't get to do that. We just have to brush it off like, you know, whatever bromance credit credibility that's going to come from from that kind of behavior. But they're also rewarded at work for that, too. So there's a lot of different sides to pressure different in our Absolutely. society. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just and for him, he he might even be feeling the pressure of if I don't make the right decisions and I'm failing my marriage by not leading properly, too. Right. So, there, I mean, there's a lot of different sides to it, but I'm just triggered and I'm just a little bit petty when it comes to this particular one. But I so, love you, though. <laughs> Golly. And I'm just glad I don't have to deal with that. So, but point <sighs> is, you know, it's everywhere and we hear you and it does need to be a conversation to Sri's point on me. She's going off. She's like, we have a whole conversation. We a whole series around it. A whole series. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into the comparison. Because yep, yep. this important is important. Part. This is important. Yep. So, uh, and what I'll do is I'm going to address his side first, meaning, okay, what does it look like if I take this extra thousand dollars and take this extra thousand dollars and dump it into my mortgage and their mortgage payment at the moment is 1703. So what that means is we're going to take a thousand dollars, add it to the 1703. So now that mortgage payment is 2703. Can you make it bigger? You guys wanted uh, to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. My, yeah. my concern is I don't want to set off whatever I set off to have to reboot it again. Yeah, but okay. I, I follow that's you. Better, I follow you. No problem. Hopefully that's better. So, uh, so again, we're going to take that 1703, add $1,000 to it. So now we have 2703 going in to our mortgage. And it takes an additional 11 years and four months to pay off the mortgage. So from age, what is it? 30, uh, 32, 35. 35. So, yep. So from age 35 to age 47, yeah. another 11 years is what it takes to, to pay off this mortgage now. So now the mortgage is paid off. What happened between year A or age 35 and 47? Nothing. That thousand dollars was going towards paying off the mortgage because the goal, his goal was to pay it off. So, okay, we hit 47. Now what do we do? Because the home has been paid off. And so now we're going to take this $2,700 a month and for the remaining 11 years, meaning from age, what, from age 47 to age, what is that, 55? We're going to dump this 2703 into a high yield savings account. Now, it doesn't have to be a high yield savings account. But for this example, if he, if he is conditioned to believe that paying off the mortgage is the right thing to do, the odds are he's also conditioned to believe that taking that 2703 and dumping it into a secure compound interest account may not be the answer either. So what are those other vehicles he would take this $2,700 and dump it into? Yeah. How, how about a Roth IRA or 401k? That's possible. A SEP IRA maybe. Um, how about crypto? How about a how your savings account? How about a CD? How about an annuity? Like there's other vehicles out there, but the thought process was, okay, once we pay off this mortgage and we save all of this interest, let's take that 2703 and let's dump it into a high yield savings account. So in total, he pays approximately a 367,000 for this home. And in essence, saved a boatload of interest. I think that interest amount that he ended up saving was right around 269, if I'm not mistaken. And by age 55, dumping that 2703 into a, uh, a high yield savings account, that would allow his money to grow to almost a half a million. So $498,000 is what has grown inside of that high yield savings account, which is pretty awesome. So again, just to recap, 2703, placed on the mortgage, paid off the mortgage in 11 years, instead of 30, 11 years. And in paying off the mortgage in 11 years, take that 2703, dump it into a high yield savings account. I've got a half a million dollars 
by age 55. Like, what's wrong with that? And I would say nothing. Well, what if that he continued to just simply pay the 1703 in the mortgage? And this is Sasha's perspective. Continue paying that 1703 and take that thousand dollars and continue to grow your secure compound interest account. And that mortgage at the end or by age 55 would not be paid off. In addition, you would have paid in total about 613,000 for that house. So clearly almost double would have been paid for that home. And Sasha would have paid right around 246,000 extra on the mortgage in paying that off in that 30 year period. But what would have her secure compound interest account had accumulated in that same period of time. So that thousand dollars a month over that same period of time would have produced for her a million dollars of cash value, a death benefit worth about 3.29 million and income at age 55 of 111,000 tax free for life. Again, a half a million dollars sitting in a high yield savings account mortgage paid off. No, no, no monthly payment required. Saved a boatload of interest. Awesome. But other than saving the interest, what else did you win? What was accomplished? Okay, I've got 2703 free to go build my retirement. Cool. And you've established a half a million dollars in a high yield savings account. That's awesome too. But it's nowhere near $111,000 tax free for life. It is nowhere near being a millionaire. And it is nowhere near if something were to happen to you, a three point nine million dollar uh, tax, uh, three point nine million dollar death benefit. Nowhere close. Now, there's one other piece I want to throw into this equation, though. What if he did agree? What if he did agree that, you know what, a secure compound interest account does make sense. And at, at year 15, meaning after we paid off the home, we're going to take. That 2703. And we're going to place that 2703 into a secure compound interest account from age. I think it's 43 till age 65 or till age 55. So if you don't mind, let's jump over to the calculator. And what I want to show is. So the third aspect of this is what if. After paying off the home in 15 years, take that 2703 and dump it into the calculator. All right, there it is. So let's take a look. So again, age 43. And matter of fact, let's pay it out till age 65. Till age 65. And there's no lump sum. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that 2703 and just let it come up. 2703 and just let it compound till age 65. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not mad at $239,000 tax free for life. So I've paid off my mortgage, no mortgage. And I've let this 2703 compound till age 65. I've got $2 million of cash value. Like where's, where's the harm in that? Who's upset about having $239,000 tax free for life at age 65. But remember, we got to go back to the goal was the goal to start taking income at 65. Was that no. the goal? No. The She's goal was, I want to fire my job. The goal was, I want to be in a position to be able to fire my job. So the goal was 55. What does this same dollar amount look like at age 55? The goal might be <laughs> different after she has this financial conversation. But still, at I'm age 55, saying. it's $68,000 a year. So what was it inside of a, allowing a thousand dollars to compound till age 55, 111,000, 68,000 dollars still isn't bad. Like my point to this is I don't think there's a wrong answer. There's just a better answer. I don't think there's a wrong strategy. I think there's a more efficient strategy. Meaning taking that, take, taking that difference between paying off the home and letting it, putting it in a secure compound interest vehicle, not a high yield savings account, gave you 
$613,000 compared to a half a million. And because of the growth inside of this product, this 613,000 produces for you $68,000 tax free. And don't get me wrong, this is not 111, so I'm not comparing. I'm just saying I'm not mad at $68,000 tax free. I don't know that they would be able to fire their job at this point. So again, it's not as efficient but it's still a significant income and there's a death benefit associated with this as well. If something were to happen, we're still talking about 3.8 million. <laughs> I mean, well, there's it, nothing wrong with 3.8 million. Go ahead. And, and there is, there isn't anything that comes from paying off of your, paying off your house. You could have be freed of paying the mortgage. And here's the point. The point is you could be freed of paying the mortgage, but, still be broke because you don't have any income coming in. You can be free of paying the mortgage, but paying off the mortgage does not secure wealth. Right. And if something were to happen to him or to her in the meantime, there, there is no mortgage company that has a clause that's like, okay, you know what? If you're significant. Your spouse passed away, can't contribute to your financial situation anymore. That sucks for you. We totally get it. Here's something to help out. The mortgage is like, sorry, you still owe us, okay? You still owe us, same amount every month. Um, life happens. Everybody knows that. It is literally the only thing that we're guaranteed in life, and yet it's the least, the thing that we're the least prepared for. Crazy, right? No doubt. And here's the thing, because I just want to make sure this is clear. So it's sixty-eight thousand compared to at age at age fifty-five. 111. So 68,000 compared to 111 mm -hmm. is the decision that's being made here. Which one is better? Which one makes the most sense? Which one is most efficient? And again, as I mentioned, she has not paid the home off. But, but if she, she wanted to pay the home off, she's a millionaire. Yeah. She can still do so. So she could still pay the home off even after paying double for the home. Like, it just the math, it just does not make any sense. Okay, but if you think of it in a different way, and I think I, we did kind of, I think what's coming does kind of show it in this way, but not in this exact way. If you think of it, he was prioritizing the $260,000 up front where she was prioritizing a larger amount on on the back end, right? Which we can we can see the value in that for sure. Okay, here. We'll we'll Oh wait. I want to be other two. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So, so here we're showing just like the figure side by side, but here's where I, this is how I see it. I see it as she was going, if we pay $260,000, we actually get a million dollars. That's how much a million dollars cost. Or we can just sit here with our 260,000 and do the best that we can with that amount. And here's the difference that I think is for the majority of people, this is like a mindset shift for sure, but this is totally understandable. If you're sitting here thinking to yourself, if somebody said, if I give you a hundred dollars today, or I'll give you $500 in a year from now, most people would be like, you know what, bro? I don't even know you. <laughs> so I can't trust that, that that money's coming because I've been crossed way too many times in my life. And I would think I'd rather get it over with now and just know that I've got the money today. Like, let's just be done with it. Let's just do the 100 now, right? That's what most people would do because we just have no strategies and we, we aren't educated about these things. If these conversations were more of a part of our traditional schooling and we understood how to build wealth, then it, it's a no brainer, right? Like if somebody said, you pay me 20 cents and I will, for every 20 cents you give me, I will give you a dollar. If this was a vending machine that popped out money and you just put 20 cents in, you put the code in and boop, a dollar came out, there would be a line for this machine, right? Matter of fact, you wouldn't want to leave your turn, right? Yeah, you would, you would, how do I get my own machine? Because I need this machine. And that's essentially what it is. But in the beginning, somebody's going, yeah, but how many 20 cents do you have to put in? And how hard do I have to work for those 20 cents? 
because the stock market is like a casino, because most of these these systems are like casinos even the real estate market can feel like that because you don't know when the crash is going to happen and if you're busy doing your job then oftentimes you aren't paying attention to every single thing that's happening to understand when someone's going to pull the rug out from underneath you and i think that's the part it's the trust part knowing that in this type of environment normally if you don't have a zero percent floor if you don't have something that has low risk like you can't even see my hand movements because I'm all cut off. I don't like that. Okay, if you don't. <laughs> it's hard to be a producer and uh, an orator at the same time, right? I get it. Okay. You're having three conversations in your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the, the, the point is that if you are not versed in these and you're mm. just seeing that they all have risk, then you, all you're doing is mitigating risk. All you're doing is looking for the path of least resistance, the thing that you don't have to keep, stay, that's not going to keep you up at night, the thing that's not going to cost you your marriage having arguments about it, right? And you just want to move forward and know that, you that you're going to be okay. Like, things should be getting easier, not harder. And I think that's what we're showing people is that it doesn't have to be hard and there is a smarter, not harder method. But, but hold on. What are the vehicles that are available? Like, let's just step through. What are the vehicles right now available to this couple to be able to produce secure income? Like, name them. Because it's not a 401k. It's not a Roth IRA. It's not a TRS. It's not a TSP. It's not a government 457 plan. It's not a SEP IRA. It's not any of those. So is it your Robinhood account where you're day trading? Is, is that the one like like name it like what is it is it infinite banking is it using a whole life policy with guaranteed income but well when you start to peel the layers back you understand that the growth inside of that is negative because it's not designed for income like so what are the vehicles that and are when designed you, for income that are designed for in what are the vehicles yeah. that are designed for income and what i mean by that is what are the vehicles that are secure like name them what are they and I think identifying what those are is key because when you when you peel back the layers on that, because someone's going to say real estate. Yes, I agree. Real estate. There's an opportunity with with real estate to be able to produce a secure income. Yes, there is. It also takes a lot of work, too. You know, so so th there are vehicles out there. Don't get me wrong. What I'm talking about here is a passive. Income producing vehicle producing secure, uninterrupted compound interest for life. And what was your job in this process? Your job was to take care of your monthly premiums and watch this thing grow. And to that point, um, there's two aspects here, right? One has liquidity and leverage. One has tax-free income for life. And one has a sizable death benefit. And none of them include paying off your mortgage early. That's it. Now, how? How is this even possible? Like, how is it that there's this vehicle out there that is able to do these things? And what I what I was able to do with her is help her see how or actually her and her husband help them both see how money was actually growing inside of this account and why we are at this point. Because I go back to this. The calculator says this at the end of the first three years, she put in three years of her money, 17 in year one, 17 in year two. 12,000 in year three. And at year three, we're going to add leverage of 17,000. Well, in her case, it was 17 year one, 17 year two, 12,000 in year three, but we actually added leverage of 18,5. So these numbers. How is that possible? And these numbers don't even reflect that. So these numbers are less than yeah. what her actual is. Okay. Because can, you, can you show him? Because I put little comments in there. Can I show and him? We just need to resolve that he, he he's on the right hand side. No, you can't see him. It's frozen, dear. Oh, dang it. What there is the go. deal here? So there he is. No, and his comment, his thought bubble, because see? <laughs> he had his WTF moment. No, that's why it's important, because this is why we call it the WTF moment. It's right. not, it's, it's twofold, right? It's obviously like when you realize and you go, huh, what, what the heck? 
the other part is when you realize that wealth, time, and freedom are all available to you and that there is a strategy for this and it doesn't have to be as hard as you thought it was. And that's the moment when people realize and they go, oh, oh, okay. And for many of you watching, this might be your WTF moment just seeing this. They also want to see some figures, so I wanted to move Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. And the key is to lay things out side by side. I honestly don't believe there is a wrong answer. I think it's about efficiency. And when you come and talk to me, it's about income. I don't, I, we can talk about velocity banking. Don't get me wrong. We can talk about debt elimination. We can talk about paying off your mortgage. We can talk about getting a first position HELOC so that you can pay off debt faster. We can have that conversation. But for me, it's about the goal. Their goal was retiring early. Show me how paying off your home helps you retire early. And I will show you the math that says if you pay yourself first, starting today, somewhere secure, compound your money and use leverage to exponentially grow it. I can show you all day long that paying yourself first today will make more money for you than waiting 15 years after you've paid off a debt. It's just math. It is not complicated. And I hate math. So <laughs> I like that when you say that, because it makes it sound so easy. But when you are really trying to understand this stuff, it does feel overwhelming. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I want I want to do a few. Oh, you have some other things to go over? No, no, we're done. We're done. Okay. Um, we have go some ahead. comments. Yeah, let's do it. Go ahead if you want to. No, I was going to ask. It, did we want to step through what though? What year one, year two, and year three actually looks like? Because we can yeah. do that. If that's a part of the questions, we can absolutely take that approach. I have no issue with that whatsoever. But yeah, let's jump into the questions. Yeah, and I'm looking at our, um, to see what texts might have come in too, because sometimes people text us during our, mm -hmm. during our stream. So I'm trying to keep my eye out for that. LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. You're a hell of a producer, I'm telling you, because I'm not looking at any of that stuff. Just so we're clear, <laughs> I am not looking at any of those things other than this dang vibe board. Yeah, <laughs> Brenda says, income on steroids, Donnell. And it is. It, and it's it. And we're going to follow that up That's with it. William's uh, comment because he says, well, if you can live off 70K, you can take that extra 31K a year to pay off the mortgage. And after it's paid, you're back to living off the full 111K. Yeah. How about this? You got options. And that's the key here. That The key here is these strategies that we're talking about, because I go back to what's the pitch? Please explain to me what I'm pitching you. What I'm walking you through is the options available to you to be able to produce wealth. You're going to tell me which one makes the most sense. If you tell me you want that thousand dollars to go pay down your mortgage, I am going to help do everything in my power to show you how to take that thousand dollars to go pay off your mortgage. But if you ask me which one is better, I'm going to tell you the math says don't do it. That's what the math says. But this vehicle is so flexible that allows you to be able to do that and still generate wealth. Like, yep. what are we talking about? Okay, Kelly, I'm going to get to your question in just a second. She's got a really important question. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to say this, though, because if we would have titled this and only been talking about how to pay your mortgage off faster, which a lot of people on Bait YouTube and switch. do, <laughs> a lot of people do, and they are only talking about this strategy. Let's say a lender or a mortgage company or even somebody who's just doing velocity banking, that this is a topic that they would uh, cover at the strategy on how to... They will show you how to pay your mortgage off faster. If that's what you're asking for, that is exactly what they're going to show you. They're not going to show you where you end up after you do that. Right. And I go back to that's what makes us different. We yeah. focus on the goal. What's the goal? After you've paid off your mortgage, then what? But here's the thing. Isn't it sad that so many people will go through this process? They'll make a whole dang video. They will edit the video, post the video, script the video out. And then still be landing people, giving people advice that's only going to end them, uh, may, mean that, means that they're going to end up poor in the end because they don't have income. So that's great that you don't have a mortgage payment, but how are you going to eat, sis? Like, you got to have income. You know what I mean? You have to have income. And we cannot depend on the uh, governmental systems that are in place. We already know that especially going forward there are people today who are not able to who are barely surviving off of what these systems were and the promises that were made what essentially what you just walked people through honestly is the new pension it is 
See, it's the, it is. the pension was the idea that you had just all you had to do was show up to work and do your job and your the rest of your life in financial security was taken care of. You didn't have to think about that because your job was to do your job. And that that was the reward for showing up every day and putting your all in. And essentially this becomes the same thing where you are putting in, you are able to go to work and do your job. And now you don't have to become a dang financial advisor uh, uh, after working on the weekends, right? For yourself. Let's go back. Like, let's go back to the original slide with Sasha laying in her bed, dreading the fact that she hates her job, which means what? Nine times out of 10, she's probably not going to be at that job forever. Mm. Oh, so, yeah. so therefore, Let's say she has that 401k with that job and she leaves that company to go somewhere else. Yeah. Now the growth that that 401k supposedly had has been stifled. And now she's starting over somewhere else, that whole compound interest cycle versus starting a secure compound interest account. It travels with her. So to your point around it being a pension, it doesn't matter where she works. It doesn't matter whether the job matches or not. It doesn't matter whether she's making more money or making less money with the exception of she has to still make her monthly contributions because it, this, this, this product, this strategy, this pension moves with her. It doesn't matter where she is. It doesn't matter what job she has. It doesn't matter whether her company is contributing to their 401k and matching or not. She's going to be just fine because at age 55, she gets to turn around and go, you know what? I get to control my time. That's right. That's right. And I think it's it's important to have those options. But let's say she did go and trade her job, got a different job, because obviously she was so tired when she called you in the beginning. Anyway, she was like, I want out. How can I get out? Um, guess who does win if she leaves? One, her job that got the tax breaks for her contributing and for them putting whatever little match they're giving her in the first place, because that's what it's set up for, for them to benefit. And then two, all of the brokers and managers that are from here to here, from the where her money went in to where her money started growing, all the fees were those two thirds that we talk about. And if you are unaware of what I'm talking about, the retirement you got to watch the retirement gamble. This is like my new, this is the thing. I should just have like retirement gamble hat, put it on my glasses, like retirement gamble. You should be earrings. traveling down at the bottom. I, I give this, I send so much traffic to this, this, it's a full documentary. But if you go to, how about this? Here we go. No, no, no. I changed it. Okay. Go to selfdirected.info forward slash live. Let me add that. Okay, I'm not gonna do it right now. Forward slash live. Then I put the retirement gamble there. You could just click it now. Isn't that nice? Isn't that's nice and convenient. Okay, so uh, Kelly, I wanna answer her question real yeah, quick. And then I'm gonna go back up because there's a lot. Um, she says, I'm going through cancer. Do you think mm -hmm. I will get approved for life insurance plan through self-directed? Uh, so I'm not an underwriter, I don't know. Uh, but I do understand that you're battling uh, a, quite a significant challenge. Um, it costs nothing to be assessed. It costs nothing to go through the process and to be um, uh, to go through the underwriting process to determine whether or not you do or you don't uh, qualify. It costs nothing. But let's say for whatever reason, you may not. Um, do you have insurable interest? Meaning, um, do you are you in a household where you have children, parents, siblings, um, that you are responsible for. And it is possible that if you have insurable interest over others, you have the ability to open a secure compound interest account on them and you would control those dollars. You would control that growth. You would control any income being made from it. Yeah, and then um, they would be able to, so a lot of older people do this anyway because they essentially are looking for how do I leave a legacy? Right. This is a heck of a legacy to leave someone because their policy continues to grow. So um, on that note, but I also wanted to address, she had asked uh, an insurance plan through self-directed. We're not an insurance company, so Absolutely you're not getting not. it through through us. Yeah, let's, let me break that down. Let me okay. break that down Yeah. because that's very important. So let's start here. I am not a tax attorney. I am not a financial financial advisor. This is not financial information. This is my opinion. I am walking you through actions and steps that we take. Like these are things that we honestly do right now. And I'm sharing with you my opinion on, hey, 
Maybe you, maybe this may resonate with you. And these are examples that actual clients of mine are going through, and this is how they are stepping through these same challenges. And so you're right. We are not a life insurance company. We partner with an A plus rated life insurance company, meaning MPI or premium finance is a strategy, premium finance strategy. And it, that strategy is applied to an IUL. That IUL has to come from a life insurance company. And the life insurance company we partner with is Mutual of Omaha for the most cases, but there's a lot of life insurance companies we work with. The key is there are A plus rated life insurance companies that have been around since before the Great Depression, that aren't going anywhere, that are multi-billion dollar industries that bailed out the banks in 2008. So where is your life insurance product? It is definitely not with me. There will never be an exchange of a dollar between you and I. My job is the strategy. And that a strategy is then applied to that life insurance product. Sorry, sweetheart, if I cut you off. No, no, that's, and I, and I just wanted to say that the concept of being self-directed is a mindset. It's a movement that we're starting. It's saying that you're taking control of your finances, that you're getting educated to make, uh, to make educated, confident uh, decisions today that will impact your future later. It's just really a movement that we're starting that people can go, uh, realize now that they can go and get uh, con full control, control over their yeah and that's really what it is is it's not feeling like you are at the mercy of the market the mercy of somebody else who is going to give you advice or not because a lot of us didn't have access to this information even growing up and so now that we do sometimes these are uncomfortable conversations to have too so knowing where your leverage is having some of this some some of these strategies that even if you had a few in your back pocket you will start to see opportunities different you'll start to see where your opportunities are and they won't pass you by or be staring you in the face and you can't even see them so that's where self-directed comes in that is our it's it's part of our our mantra it's if uh, you don't come from a wealthy family make sure a wealthy family comes from you and we're going to teach you how because that's the mission that we're on to so I have a con another comment. Oh, do you want to say something? Well, I was just going to say um, <clears throat> what we also try to do is help you understand that life insurance companies, financial institutions, financial advisors, banks do not have your best interest at heart. So all we're trying to do is arm you with the same tools that they are currently using against you. You get armed with their same tools. You can become them. You can become the bank. You can mm -hmm. have more control over your destiny. You can become your best and your, uh, your, 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 I guess your fiduciary, um, your fiduciary standard for you. Meaning yeah. it's pay yourself first, focus on you, take control over your previous employer's plan to be able to invest in what you want, when you want, how you want to include the same things that Fidelity and Vanguard offer. Like you can do that, but you can have more control over how to go about it. And so it is absolutely about control. It is absolutely about putting yourself in a position to where, you know what, you walk into a bank and you know what questions to ask. That's it, you walk right into a life insurance company and you know how they are trying to manipulate you with the products that they are trying to sell you when you sit down in, in front of your financial advisor when he's pushing products you get to push back and actually have a an intellectual conversation around hey these are the tools that i would actually like to be able to do or these are the paths that i would like to be able to go down and force them out of that box that they're in to be able to be honest with you and help you understand how to get to your goal boom i need a i need an explosion where's the producer Okay, no, no, that wasn't. Was that the bike? Was that a bike, bike bell? No. That's <laughs> 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 what it sounded like. It sounded like one of those, those bike bells. I need like an explosion. That was not, that was defeating. Okay, well, we're all work on it. We have a, we have a lot of comments. So Come on, let's might, go. Let's you go. might I'm have here. to start answering like a little faster. I'm content. here for it. You okay. know I don't answer fast, so you guys don't expect me to. So we're trying. On. Okay. Let's go. Um, Divine, she has two great questions. One fees? is, what are the fees to work with you? And the other one is, how are you compensated from me, the client? Yeah. So it depends on the V. And again, there's several strategies that we kind of lay out. So there's a self-directed IRA and 401k. And what that means is, hey, you take control of your previous employer's plan, go invest in non-traditional investments. There's uh, we talk about velocity banking. We talk about infinite banking. We talk about a first position HELOC and we talk about a secure compound interest account. Those five actions are not actions that I make money on. We don't make anything. That's, off that's of not the objective. 
The objective is not to I'll put it this way. If there's anyone making money off you to do velocity banking, I'd be concerned about that. Like I get it if people want you to pay for their time. Like I get I get that. But velocity banking is a strategy. What is there to pay for? Infinite banking is a strategy. Now, it's a strategy that uses cash value life insurance products. So you have to purchase those. Who you purchase them from and how they are structured matter. MPI is a secure compound interest account. It's a life insurance product that has to be purchased. Who do you purchase it from? You would have to purchase it through me. So there is a commission that I am paid on life insurance based products through the life insurance company. I don't make a dime off you. My profit sharing relationship is with the life insurance company that I'm working with. Just so we're clear. So any fees associated with a secure compound interest account are already included in every dollar that you're seeing running through this calculator. And then as it relates to a self-directed IRA or 401k, so self-directed retirement accounts, if you were to Google self-directed IRA or Google self-directed 401k, IRA, look at all of the banks that offer them. Why do all of these banks offer self-directed IRAs? It's because they are just high yield or they're just, uh, I'll call it um, um, uh, savings accounts with different features. They're not really that big of a deal, not really that's, uh, that uh, difficult to create. And so banks love them because they get to nickel and dime you with fees. These are the same fees that are inside your 401k. These are the same fees that are inside your TRS or your TSP. So banks love self-directed IRAs. The self-directed IRA that you would get through me, we were able to negotiate, renegotiate those fees. Now, it does still require a custodian, but we're able to minimize those fees outside of what those other traditional uh, custodians would have ever charge. So the cost of an IRA is a flat cost to me. I'm not here to nickel and dime you. Once you create your self-directed IRA, you get to go do whatever you want. A self-directed 401k is no different. Self-directed 401k, though, doesn't require a custodian. So we were able to eliminate custodial fees. So there are zero custodial fees associated, but it, there's a flat fee associated with creating a 401k. Go ahead. But that's not the case everywhere. And I'd want to, I can't that's stress it. That's that That's what makes enough. us different. That's what makes us different. Yeah. Because if you go to another place and they go, oh, we can do a self-directed 401k. First of all, no, they can't. It's not the same thing. Don't you need to ask the questions because what you'll find is, uh, remember that, remember that one call you got and they, you, they were like, Oh, this place is actually cheaper than you. You said it was a flat fee. You said it was low fee, but this place is actually cheaper. And you were like, wow, okay, we'll send it, like send it on over. And it was cheaper up front. So what they did was they started getting smart because we're on the first page of Google. Well, you and Rick are, we, again, we're married. So it's You're all with we. me, dog. So it's we. Yeah, it's, oh, what's yours is mine. First page of Google. <laughs> so... <laughs> So they're getting hip, right? And they're like, okay, well, hey, we're not going to just let these people be getting us out of business and like pulling back the curtain on all of our stuff. Now we have to get, have a, get a new strategy, I guess, to get these, uh, these accounts. Well, what he learned was that he would have quickly walked in because it was a lower fee. He would have walked right into it and then ended up paying fees on everything forever. Check writing balance transfer, yeah. zero balance fees, maintenance fees, custodial fees, check writing fees. Like there's, and again, that's how they get you when none of that is required, but banks know they have the ability to charge whatever they want to charge. So here's my point. Okay. Investigate, line me up, line my, line my strategies up against anybody else's and just do the math. Just do the math. Go ahead. Yeah, what I wanted to say, because remember I did that commercial, I was that gold company hired me to do that, that big, huge national campaign. And it was a big politician that was like signing off on all this stuff. And I was just, I was just a marketer, video editor at the time. Like I was just like, whatever, it's, it's the project. And as I started learning about what they were doing, I was like, oh snap, like this is actually a really polished scam like this is what i was contributing to too by doing the video obviously right for them but when i because i knew i had to like learn all about the the Strange. business i got to see behind the scenes what it was that they were doing and i was like holy cow in order to buy the gold they set you up with a self-directed or solo 401k or ira and they tell you that it's all like a part of this package and so like they got you whatever the case is 
read the fine print. And when you uh, are getting educated, though, you'll be able to scan through that stuff and know exactly what you're looking for so you're not having to comb through terms and conditions you know exactly what to pinpoint so that's, that's and the just key that. is we do videos to arm you with the questions to ask that's all and so just to, to specifically answer a question though what does it cost to work with me oh, nothing okay. it costs nothing to work with me um the it co costs nothing for a consult um to kind of understand what the opportunities are my only ask is that we be very clear as to what the goal is my only ask is if if there's some something specific you need help with that you have done the homework necessary to kind of understand what that is meaning if you're calling me for a secure compound interest account there's a whole lot of resources we provide to help you get educated on a secure compound interest account so we should not be talking about what is mpi when we meet it should be t we should be talking about clarity around the stuff you've learned and then how do we hit your goal not what is mpi and how does it work yeah like there's enough there's enough information out there and we're doing this live specifically for that reason go ahead says um you need a t-shirt that says what's the goal what's the we're goal we're gonna order that asap okay let's get through some of these questions because we do def we definitely have um a lot of them i'm going to go back up to the top because it's um, calculator related. Let's see, that's calculator. Oh, real quick, S. Carter. Uh, I did put the links in the description of this live stream right now. So they're already in there for that. Uh, even I even put the HELOC calculator link in there too. Awesome. So all that. Awesome. Yep. I just grabbed it all. Okay. One down. Let's see. We've got... Um... Oh, okay. Mrs. J. Rid. Okay. Hey, just tuned in. I how would this work for my 18 year old? Depends on what you want to do. Really simple. Um, eight, the beauty about 18 year olds is they have way more compound cycles than we do. So if it was, hey, I've got an 18 year old and you didn't give me a dollar amount, but that minimum, if you're wondering, is right oh. around 10. Go ahead. We need to go to the calculator, right? Yeah. Uh, that minimum is right around 10 times the age. So if, if that 18 year old was to put away, I'll just call it $200 a month for the next however long, however long you want it to. But again, if that eight, if it's an 18 year old doing it himself and he's putting away $200 a month till age 55, we're talking about $69,000 tax free for life. But let's go to a traditional retirement age of 65. What does that look like? So at $200 a month for an 18 year old, we're talking about $147,000 tax free. They're a millionaire. They've got about $1.6 million in, in liquid cash available. They've only put in 112. So over that, However, 18 to 65 year period, the contribution, the total contribution amount is $112,000 for them to have 1.6 million. And God forbid if something were to happen, we're talking about a death benefit of right around 2.1 million. It's pretty simple. Yep. Okay, um, Alondio says, I have a term policy. Would you recommend keeping it or add an MPI or just focus on an MPI only? So this is where this is where the goal here is to arm you with what questions to ask, because not all life insurance products are the same. So here's I'll, I'll give you two different scenarios. One, you bought a term policy and that term policy is just simply a basic term policy that expires if you don't die. And you probably bought it for cheap, which means you're paying twenty dollars a month for, let's call it a half a million dollar policy. You are not going to get another policy anywhere for twenty dollars a month that's going to pay out a death benefit of a half a million dollars. So you not paying that twenty dollars a month, if that twenty dollars a month isn't hurting you, I'd keep it because God forbid if something were to happen to you, your family's taken care of off twenty dollars a month. Can't beat that. Um, but if you have a, a term policy that you're paying some dollar amount like 250 300 dollars a month could that term to the, could that monthly amount do you a better service inside of a secure compound interest account absolutely all day long now how that term policy is structured matters what those rules are that allows you to be able to uh trans because there are term policies out there that are called convertible term what that means is you can convert that cat that death benefit into a permanent policy and take any growth that you have inside that convertible term and use it inside of a secure compound interest account like MPI. So again, structure matters, where you get it from matters, what the rules are associated with it matters. So it's not a straight answer as can you do this? Yes or no. It really depends. 
Okay, I'm going to combine the next two because I think they, they could go together pretty well. Lolo says, does the insurance company do periodic, for lack of a better term, checkups to determine if you're still insurable or to possibly even increase your premium if your health has taken a downturn? Hold on. Hold, hold on. That's one. And then the next one is from C. Pryor. He says, hey, good evening. Any recommendations for a 56-year-old who recently retired with a pension and a 200 K 401k 457 um, goal is to avoid taxes with rollover and have income for life. Okay, so I know that this is this could go two different ways, but here's why I think that this matters. Because there's been a couple of people who have asked for, hey, I'm older, does this still apply to me? And then you've also talked about uh, just because maybe you started like that 18 year old or that 10 year old, right? You have a kid and you started 10 years old and um, um, okay, you have 10 years old, right? And then you can only fund them for so much, but then if you hand them that policy, then they could also, because now they're an adult, they're making their own money, they could then raise the, uh, the insurable amount, right? So I think this all fits in here of like you, what your strategy is, understanding this concept and figuring out where your the best source of leverage is. That's mm -hmm. why I, that's no, why I'm with you. I'm with you. So I'm going to answer this, but I'm going to use the 18 year old to answer it. And again, the question, the first question being, um, are there periodic checks? So first off, there's not someone that's going to knock on your door to just make sure that you're still healthy to be able to maintain and keep up with your life insurance policy. However, if you take use this example of this 18 year old, um, that 200 dollars a month that that 18 year old is putting away bought a life insurance policy worth 122,000. So that's the base of the the policy. The base of the policy is 122,000. Well, throughout the years as he gets older, he's going to start to approach his MEC limit, meaning that's the maximum amount or his his guideline max. Uh that's the maximum amount that he has been approved for. Well, how does this account grow from starting out at having a life insurance base of 122,000, but ending with a 2.1 million? So to go from here to here, there are some things that have to happen in order for him to be only put away 112,000, but achieve 1.6 million in cash value. There are some things that are going to have to happen. Here's what that means. As he reaches his guideline max, as he reaches the maximum amount, uh, max, the original maximum amount that he's been approved for inside of his policy, we have to do what's called jump the policy. And so that jumping of that policy may take five years. It may take seven years, meaning when we hit that maximum, we have to jump to a new life insurance value. And when we jump to that new life insurance value, he now has room to continue building inside of his policy. And then we're going to hit that ceiling again. So the objective is to max fund your policy as quickly as possible. But if you don't, it just means that periodically we're going to have to redo your policy. So let, using this 18 year old, let's say by age 25, we have to jump his policy. Well, jumping your policy means we have to reapply. So when we reapply at age 25, there's going to be another health exam done to confirm that his health hasn't changed. But let's say his health changed. And let's say for whatever reason, he's not qualified. Well, that doesn't mean he lose what he has. It just means that in this stage, at this point, we don't qualify for more life insurance. Well, all of that leverage that was going to go into his policy that was causing him to now have to qualify for more life insurance. What can we do with that leverage? It's still available. Well, maybe he has a spouse. We can max fund the spouse's policies. Maybe he has children. We can max fund the children's policies using that same dollar amount. Or maybe he can take that dollar amount and go do infinite banking. The leverage is still available. We just may not be able to buy more life insurance, but that's the worst case scenario. Let's say his rating just changed. He's not a preferred plus non-tobacco. Maybe he picked up smoking cigars. And so now he's a smoker. So it didn't it doesn't mean he doesn't qualify. It just means his rating change. So the math inside of the product changes. Moral of the story is jumping the policy is actually a reward. Look at it this way. Hey, because I have maxed the amount of life insurance I've qualified for, I get to qualify for more. 
And now that I get to qualify for more, that means my policy gets to become even bigger. Now I get to get closer to this 1.6 million because now I'm qualifying for more life insurance. So it's almost a badge of honor. It's not a, I'll call it uh, people. I think some people call it a, a con, you know, what are the pros and cons? It's a con. No, it's not. You actually, this is a reward. And that reward means you get to add more leverage into your account so that you can start producing more income. So short of it, the 18 year old, yes, going through this policy at different stages of life, you may have to qualify for more life insurance, but that's not a bad thing. That's okay. number one. And now the second question, you were about to say yeah, something? Yeah, I just want to make sure we answered C. Pryor's question because I'm feeling like maybe. Well, you got to let me get there, babe. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the second question being, hey, for a 56 year old, and if you don't mind leaving it up so I can see what the numbers were, but for a 56 year old, I think the, the short of it was, okay, there we go. So, um, 200K. I got it. Okay. Um, uh, 200K, in, uh, a pension in a 200, 200K in a 401K slash 457. Now, this is a life insurance based product. Can you put qualified money like IRA, 401k, 403b, 457 uh, type dollars into a life insurance based product? You cannot without being taxed and depending on your age without being penalized as well. But you can take that $200,000 if you're, I'll call it your time horizon, the, the amount of time it's going to take before you actually need your retirement dollars. If, you're, if that horizon is off into the future, let's call it 10, 15 years, you can take that qualified money and put it into an annuity that can produce lifetime income for you. And at this stage in our economy, there are some great annuities out there that can produce secure, uninterrupted, tax-free or tax-deferred, depending on the vehicle, uh, income for life. Um, so there's an absolute, uh, I'll call it a solution for you at 56 using qualified money. But if you also have cash flow, you have the ability to, at 56, you are not outside of the scope of what can produce significant income for you inside of a vehicle like this. But what you have to realize is you're 56 you don't have as many compound cycles as that 18 year old. So therefore you can't put away $200 a month and expect to be retired uh, soon at 56. We have to do it, be a bit more aggressive. So is there a lump sum that can be added that can help you get compounding faster to be able to produce income? And maybe it's not all of the income that because you do have a pension that what it looks like. You do have a pension uh, that that's available to you, but maybe there's supplemental income that a product like this can produce. A lot yep. of words, a lot of words, a lot, lot of, of words. words. Okay. <laughs> With the Facebook um, comments populating because I can't comment back and I did. So um, what's his name? I just want to address Johnson. Johnson, we got you. I did re reply on Facebook um, in text, but if you're not seeing it, then that's a good indication for us to know that there's also a problem there. So that's good. He was asking, like, this is his first time of being able to catch us live. When mm -hmm. are we usually going live? I'm going to see if I can find his comment real quick. Boop, boop. Yeah, he's like, um, don't say you're going to reply to comments if you're not going to be replying to comments. And I feel you on that. It's Wednesday and Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we we used to do Tuesdays and Thursdays. We switched though because I, we just felt like this worked better for everyone. If you know, if going earlier would work for more people, like let us know. We would love that feedback because we definitely are here to serve you guys. This is not about us. So um, give us that feedback. But yeah, thanks for joining us, and I'm glad that you got to catch us live. You just happened to be watching a video. A couple of people said that too. I saw, I think I saw a comment come through Pinnacle related to the 2703. So I yeah. don't know if I, we already addressed that, but I nope. think I saw it. Yep, I saw it too. Um, they could pay the mortgage off once the cash value in MPI gets large enough, maybe two uh, seven year cycles, and they could contribute the 2703 moving forward. So what you're saying is there's a compromise here. And I would hope that 
you know, if this is you and I, sweetheart, and we're, we're I'm, I'm set in my set in my ways as to how we achieve wealth. And you have this new tool that I am not educated on. There is absolutely a con there's not one answer here. There's absolutely a compromise here that can still achieve the same goal, pay off the home, build wealth like there are many different ways to go about it. Here's what I would hope everyone walks away with. It's pay yourself first versus paying any debt. Pay yourself first. If you can't put a thousand dollars a month towards your secure compound interest account, put five. You can't put five, put two. What can you do to pay yourself first? Put yourself in a position such that you have a vehicle that's working for you in addition to your traditional means of, uh, uh, or your traditional approach to retirement planning. Yep. Okay. Next one. Carl says 63 year old uh, Mr. O wants to contribute a lump sum of 40,000 with an 18,000 monthly premium. Please show results for 6, 12 and 18 years. Thanks. Okay. 63? Yep, 63. And, and again, the moral of the story here is time. It's not the like the dollar amount is awesome, but it it's time is the factor. And so 63 I'll run this out till age 75. I think it was a $40,000 lump, is that it? Is that correct? Yes. And 1800 a month. Yep. And so the thought process here is we're talking supplemental income. So you've put in, uh, and just so we clear about this $40,000 lump, that $40,000 lump is 20,000 in year one, 20,000 in year two. This calculator will not allow me to build it such that it's 40,000 all in at one time, but just understand I can build it that way. I just can't do the, uh, the calculator won't show it. And here's why I say that this 39,000 of income that it shows if you put in the whole 40,000 in at year one, this, oh, I guess I got to move it up because of the, uh, this $40,000 that it shows. If you are able to put that 40,000 all in at year one, it is definitely going to be larger than $40,000 a year, probably something closer to 55, if not 60, they're probably more like 55, $52,000 a year tax-free for the rest of your life. And again, at age 75, we're talking about that being supplemental to whatever else you're receiving from a Social Security or a pension or uh, any type of other retirement account. And you would have an asset worth about four hundred two thousand and a death benefit that started out at about four five hundred and forty thousand, uh, which would you know, if something were to happen to you after age 65, we're talking about one point two million. So this is again, this is a great vehicle to produce um, supplemental income. The piece that you have to remember about being 63 or 60 plus or um, or around that age is we don't have as many compound cycles. And what impacts your ability to grow in a vehicle like this is your cost of insurance. Because you're older, it costs more to insure you. If I was to do, if I was to use the 18 year old, put these exact same dollar amounts in for the exact same period of time, you would see a significant difference in income. Why? The cost of insurance is lower. So therefore, because the cost of insurance is lower, they have more money that's actually compounding for them, which it produces more income over time. What else we got? Okay. Um, we got lots of comments and I wish I could put them all up, but I want to make sure we get to the, the questions. Okay. We've got this one from Michael. He says, I just started my first position HELOC with a sweat function. How much life insurance should I get based on my cash flow? So not knowing any numbers, but let's talk about this sweep account because it's not something that I talk about because I don't have one. But for those who have a first position HELOC and they have a sweep account inside of their first position HELOC, I understand how they work. And what that means is the idea behind velocity banking is what? All of your income goes into the debt tool. And then all of your bills are paid from the debt tool. Well, what the sweep, well, having a first position HELOC with a sweep account means when you get paid and your money goes into your checking account at certain points in time, usually it's like midnight every night or midnight once a week or whatever that time frame is, anything in that checking account gets pulled into the first position home equity line of credit. What that means is you don't have to physically move money from your checking account to your first position HELOC. There is a sweep that happens every, at whatever that frequency is. And that's what that sweep does is that reduces the amount of daily interest being accrued because anytime there's money in that checking account, it gets moved onto that HELOC and any dollar that get moved into the debt tool reduces the balance of the debt tool, which ultimately means you're now saving on interest. 
First position HELOCs with sweep accounts are amazing. There's a lot of great products out there with fun with uh, great functions. I'm, I'm curious, Michael, what bank you use, because uh, I know there's many different banks that offer them, but that's that's pretty huge, huge. Now, that means you have a vehicle that your cash flow is living on that vehicle. And your question was, how much life insurance should I get based on the cash flow? I'm going to rephrase your question. The question you should be asking is the question I'm going to ask you. What's the goal? So how much life insurance should I get? I'm not here to sell you life insurance. That's not what I do. I focus on income. So the question is, how much income do you want? And based off that answer, we can determine what that looks like from a life insurance perspective. And my goal, my job would be to help you achieve that income by buying the least amount of life insurance legally possible. And that's called a max funded for savings. That's the company that uh, had reached out to us. They have a great product, obviously. And he said it was a product designed for velocity banking. So here's what he, and this is what he was saying without saying it. His first savings, first position HELOC has automation that pulls your money from your checking account so you don't have to move money from your checking account to the debt tool. It does it automatically, which is why he was saying it was designed for velocity banking. Like that's huge. That's huge. But again, what, how much life insurance should you buy? That's the wrong question to ask. The question is you should think about is what's your goal? And if you have an income number in mind, let's, let's work backwards to help you understand how to achieve that income. And as a result of achieving that income, it's going to purchase a certain amount of life insurance. Till age 45, is that the age? Yep, love it. And again, I, I, you want to put that 10,000 in all, all in one time. I just can't do it. So I always say that, but I just want to make sure it's clear. And 250 is 10 times the age. So this is obviously, Connie's been listening because Connie understands that that bare minimum is 10 times the age. So she's saying if, if she's putting in 250 a month and I dump in a lump sum of um, uh, $10,000 one time, that's $25,000 that's available tax-free. That's an asset at age 45 worth $226,000. Raise your hand if your parents helped you achieve an asset worth $226,000 by the age of 45. Connie's there's, killing it. There's not a whole lot of us out here. There's probably not any. And you play this out because, again, okay, $250 a month by age 45. If you needed, um, let's call it $100,000 to go uh, put down on your dream home, you have that ability to do that. If you needed $25,000 to go buy a vehicle, you could pay off that vehicle in your sleep. You don't need financing. So you've got an asset that's working for you. And if something were to happen to you, God forbid, we're talking about $408,000 available to you or a million dollars in death benefit. But let's play this out a little bit longer. What does this look like at age 55? What does this look like at age 60? What is, well, what does like, it look like if instead of 250, she put in 500? Again, there, there's, there's nothing but positive here. 250 to me is sufficient. To have a two hundred thousand dollar asset by age forty five, and then all you have to do is do is continue that two fifty, and you can retire by age sixty. Like where else can you do that? Um, yeah. Let me back this age back down. So by age forty five, five hundred dollars a month. We're talking again a forty four thousand dollar asset. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, forty four thousand dollars tax free for the rest of your life, an asset worth almost four hundred thousand dollars. Like where else can you achieve this and not be taxed and penalized? Yeah. Where else can you achieve this? I have access to your money tax free and you not be hit with, hey, you're not at retirement age yet. You're going to be taxed. You're going to be hit with 30 percent if you touch this. Like, well, what are those vehicles? You could also use this to keep funding. You can use the policy to keep funding the policy, too. That's the follow me for more hacks. Absolutely. And what she's that. saying there is, let's say if at age 45, your 25 year old went, I'm not putting another dollar in this thing. Yeah. As I kind of walk through that example with Sasha, even though she would stop contributing that thousand dollars, she had 17,000 based off the calculator, but 18,005 in actual that was still go helping her account grow. So even if she stopped contributing at year three, that 18,005 was going to contribute for. 
And this would yeah. be no different. If you decided at age 45, I'm done. I'm not putting another dollar in this thing. Your account is still going to grow because of all of the leverage in it. Show me the whole life policy that can do that. Show me the whole life policy that will continue building over time if you stop contributing. Well, Greg, I know you're I know you're on and I love that you're here because I can see your comments in the chat. But just based off of what we've learned about you so far, too. And welcome back, by the way. I love that we get to like know people and they come back and it, we're like, this is a community. A family. Yeah, I love it's that. Community. And I think that just in paying attention. Am I going to stay? OK, OK, pokey. Uh, just paying attention to where's your leverage. So some people are going, well, I can't because I don't qualify. Do, where's your leverage? We're just going to start looking for leverage. That's all we do is the first thing that we do for velocity banking, for anything. And all those consults that, that we, that we do the first thing. And sometimes, uh, Donnell and I, we're not in agreement with where the leverage is. Sometimes we have to work it out because I see the leverage here. He sees the leverage here and my strategy sometimes and where I th see things totally different from where he sees things too. So I, I think is really cool about that is that once you start to learn, you may come up with a third strategy neither one of us could see either. And that's what I really appreciate. Okay, one more um, one more uh, question here from Lolo. She's, she's like the, um, she's the goat of questions for, for this stuff. I just love her questions. Okay, are there taxes owed on the cash withdrawn from the policy? Words matter. Words, yeah. Words matter. Um, whenever you hear me talk about a secure compound interest account, you will never hear me talk about withdrawing money, withdrawing cash value from your policy. But are to, to just address the question, are there taxes owed on cash withdrawn from any cash value life insurance policy? Not this one on any. The answer is yes. If you withdraw cash from any cash value life insurance policy, you lose the tax advantage. The tax advantage is it's growing tax free. The tax advantage is because you're funding it with tax money you've already paid taxes on it. The money that's growing in it is growing tax free. And the way you receive tax free distributions is by leveraging the money in the policy. Leverage is just a fancy word for saying borrow. If you know anybody that sells life insurance, they use terms like taking a participating loan. When you're borrowing money from your life insurance policy, you're taking a participating loan. The argument is, should you pay it back or not? In a properly designed product like this, you don't have to worry. With The numbers that you're seeing in this calculator are intentional. They are not by chance. They're intentional because this is the dollar amount you can take in income and not impact the growth in your policy. So therefore, paying it back is not an issue. It is not required. There's no there's no uh, stipulation that says you can't continue taking this dollar amount because something's going to happen to you in your policy. It's intentionally designed this way. So this is leverage. This is borrowing against and it's borrowing against, which says you don't have to pay it back. Therefore, it maintains its tax advantages. So therefore, there's no taxes involved. So words absolutely matter. OK, when I'm reading your guys' comments, I can't help. Sometimes sometimes I'm dying laughing and I'm trying to hold it together. Other times I'm feeling super moved because some some of these shares are life changing and that means so much to me. This one that just came through this text that we just got, it's a manual from yesterday's call. And he said, just saying hello, just we just wanted you to know that we're watching. And we have we have like a 32 or plus percent of TV viewers, which we think is so dope, but they can't get in the chat, obviously. So this is a, obviously a way that they can do that. Um, his 13 year old daughter just saw your example about the 25 year old. She is all in lots of gold nuggets here. So hold on. I met with Emmanuel, his wife and their dog and their son <laughs> and That's their so dog's cute. amazing. Like the dog wanted to be involved. The dog was involved in the consult. He wanted to make sure he or she, I don't know if it was he or she, wanted to make sure that we knew that he was involved. But their son, man, is so intelligent. I want to say he's 19. His objective is to be an engineer. And I think uh, what, I, what I gathered from him, just the energy that he was providing, like he was doing the math in his head. Like, wait a minute, you're telling me if I do this, I can tip back? Absolutely. So it's pretty awesome. So.
The, the dog's a he. Don't mistake your dog. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Okay, I want to just really quick um, give an. Just get some. I always do that. Get some attention to this. Uh, it's got an upgrade recently. Our Velocity Banking Workbook. Uh, not only did it get an upgrade, thanks to all of your feedback, by the way, while the stuff that was broken, because Angelique's not an, an Excel expert, it's, it looks amazing. It functions way better now. And on top of that, I put a chat GPT prompt in there. So now you can have chat GPT even help you walk through what your plan is and start your strategy. Boom. What? So... I'm going to put her out there because I don't know if she's done it yet. Man, it wouldn't it be amazing if inside the Facebook group she went live and kind of just walked people through how to use it and use ChatGPT? Like that would be an incentive for the people in the group, like something special for the people in the group that they get to receive. That would be amazing. Yeah. Well, okay. The, the other thing I could do is do one here like a different day or something if everyone is is tells me when the best time would be because there are other people that don't have Facebook. I think okay, they're not yeah. in the group. So I'm trying to find a way to like serve like everyone. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. But this is where like you that. can go and it's a vibe in our Facebook group. We are having a great time getting to know people and it's a great place for community, of course, to build with other people who are on a like journey, you know, similar journey, learning about things. And then you, uh, we can learn to better support each other. I think is, is really the, the whole point. I don't know. My words are getting all jumbled out of here. It's feelings. Okay. All my feelings are coming out. It's an, it's a vibe in there, but the, for the people who can't join for whatever the reason is, it's okay. I'm going to find you guys. Sounds like we got a, uh, looks like we got, a, I just saw it slide by uh, Kevin ship got a uh, calculator request in uh, pinnacle. Oh, yep. I just okay. Saw it slide by. Yep. yep. Let's do it. Um, age 54. Can retire anytime with 25. You're not supposed to use names when people text in. Well, I just did. Okay, we're not going to do that from now on. You can be totally anonymous in here from this day forward. Okay, it's going to be anonymous. I'm learning, dog. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 54 can retire anytime with 25 years of service. Okay. Work at the VA hospital, have 95K in the TSP. We'll be looking self-direct my TSP when I retire and also do MPI with $600 a month with a 10K yearly lump. Okay. So 10K yearly yeah. wouldn't even be a lump. It would be added to, no. So what you're saying is 10K annually plus $600 a month. So I'm just going to do that math. 600 times 12 is 72, 72 plus 10. So that's uh 17,200 on an annual basis. How you distribute is totally up to you. You can absolutely do 10,000 up front and then the 600, you know, monthly you have the full autonomy to take that approach. But I'm just for this calculator though, I'm just going to show it as uh 17, two. Um, and then we got to divide 17, two by 12, which I don't know what that is, but I'm about to tell you here real quick. If we could use 17, a calculator, I would really appreciate that. 12 is about $1,400 a month. So what we're saying is okay. about $1,433, $1,433 a month. And age 54, you didn't tell me what age, but here's what I know about, again, I'm in, I'm in that ballpark. We just have to be a little bit more aggressive with the amount that we contribute or we have to give our money more time. So as significant as 1433 a month is, uh, I, I kind of played this out till age uh, 72. We can absolutely work this, this dollar, this age back. But what we're talking about is about $69,000 tax free for life. We're talking about an asset worth about 612,000. I guess I don't need to do that. About 612000 and a death benefit of about $1.5 million. And this is on top. This is on top of your pension. This is on top of your TSP. And I understand you want to self-direct your TSP to go to invest in what you want. But this is all on top of that, on top of Social Security and everything else. So, um, and again, you back this number down. Backing the number down just means it's less amount at that at that age so fifty six thousand at age 70 and here's the piece of what, what i like to share with people around this is this 1433 a month is in this number meaning if you wanted to stop contributing 
and you didn't necessarily need all of the income, you can continue contributing from the vehicle, meaning you can use a portion of the 56,000 to continue to make your monthly premiums. If the monthly premiums uh, was 17.2, they're 17.2 sitting in this number. So if you continued making the 17.2 after taking your $56,000 uh, distribution, you just funded this thing for another year, which means you funded it till 71. So what, what that means is why would you ever stop contributing? So in, 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 from that aspect, then what does this look like at age 75? What does this look like at age 80? Like, why would you ever stop contributing? Now, the truth beyond that, the truth, the truth around that is this. You will hit a brick wall. I kind of mentioned earlier about being uh, your, your max insurability or hitting your guideline max. You will get to a point where the life insurance company will not allow you to get any more money into this product. But to me, that's a great problem to have because what that means is you've hit your max insurability. So now your, your policy is fully max funded. And so now everything that's growing in your account is just gravy and anything you want to do beyond that. Here's where you go do infinite banking. Here's where you max fund your your, your kids policies. Here's where you uh, institute your max insurability. Like that's a great problem to have. Anything else? Yep. We have one more question and then mm -hmm. I think it's probably a good time. And we have the Lizaros are watching. They came in on the chat to say, Hey, up. we're here and you should know it. Um, by the way, I did send you guys your velocity banking and I even put all the numbers in the upgraded version for you. And I actually use their example for the chat GPT to make the prompt. So that was, um, that was good to do. Now, they can go back through and, and rework it a, a different way. But I love that you get to ask it questions and then you get to say, okay, well, show me a scenario if I change this thing, right? And see how all the math, boop, 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 boop. You know, I love that. Uh, you just have to make sure though, if you guys are downloading the, uh, the workbook and you are using the chat GPT prompt or involving it in there, me personally, you just have to pay attention to what the numbers are because sometimes it does derail and you have to remind it like, hey, stay on task. <laughs> I don't know why this thing is supposed to make things easier and sometimes it makes it harder. Okay, last question here. Can a disabled veteran apply for whole life insurance? Yep. Uh, so let's be clear. The product that I'm referencing on this uh, this live on this vibe board is not a whole life policy. It's an index universal life insurance policy. But your question is the same regardless. Can a disabled veteran apply for life insurance? It doesn't matter the type. Whole life, variable life, index universal life, a premium finance strategy doesn't matter. And the short answer to that question is absolutely. Um, a disability doesn't necessarily disqualify you because think about it. You're buying life insurance. So from the underwriter's perspective, they just want to know will you be around. They just want to know that they are going to make their money back off you. Right. And in truth, that's really all going through underwriting is about. We're going to do a mathematical equation to determine whether or not we're going to make our money back within the time, this time frame around you're contributing and you start taking income or you, uh, you are no longer with us. Will we make our money back during that time? So being disabled doesn't disqualify you. It's the chronic or terminal related illnesses that tell the life insurance company the math around whether or not we are going to achieve our money or our income during your lifespan. That's the part that ends up getting people um, um, uh, not qualified for a life insurance product and a piece that people forget. This is a big one that people just don't pay attention to. BMI. BMI is one of the largest things that I've seen that have gotten clients of mine disqualified, meaning your height and weight. Um, yeah. And I always use the example of my Samoan clients from Hawaii. Um, there's like, what can you do with a 6'4", 390 pound Samoan? Like, what can you do with that? Um, height and weight absolutely matters. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Also, it's also kind of a dark conversation, to be honest. Because they're just like looking at you, sizing you up, like, are you the goods? Are I go back not? to banks, life insurance companies, financial institutions do not care about you. Yeah. They are here. They are capitalists. Their job is to make money. Life insurance companies make money off you. If you didn't realize that before now, you need to own that. 
when you walk into State Farm and you're looking at life insurance policies, what they're saying is, is your life valuable enough so that I can make enough money off of you while you're still here? The key is use them the way they're using you. They shouldn't be the only ones benefiting off your life. If you've got a term policy that you're buying and you're paying that monthly amount on, they shouldn't be the only ones benefiting from whether or not you're here. You should be doing that also. You are an asset. So you should be be able to receive income as an asset while you're here. And that's what this is about. Okay. I'll try to get through the next couple ones because we got some more coming in. And then we had some people, I think, that ran and jumped to the chat so that they could get their question in. So that's good. We've got time for that. When, when using a HELOC as your debt tool, is there any concern with the bank calling your HELOC? Yeah, we get this question a lot. Yep. And um, so a HELOC and a HELOC are not the same. <laughs> Meaning Say what? there are different versions of a HELOC. So let me go through the first one that people think of when you say the word HELOC. The first thing that people think of is this. I have a mortgage. I'm paying my mortgage. My mortgage started at a certain amount. The home was worth at a different amount. And as I pay down my mortgage, the difference between what my home is now worth and what I owe on that mortgage, there's this gap. And that gap is what pe most people call equity. And so when people say HELOC, what they're saying is I already pay my mortgage. I would like to be able to use that room between where my balance on my mortgage is and what my home is actually worth. I would like to use that room. I'd like to use that equity in the form of a home equity line of credit. So what you're saying is I already have my mortgage. The next thing I want in addition to my mortgage is a home equity line of credit. So your mortgage and that home equity line of credit are in positions. The bank looks at that is in the number one position is this mortgage. The number one item that we as the bank care about is this mortgage. Why? In order for us to make our money, I go back to banks don't care about you. So that the bank can guarantee that they will get the money that they're owed. The most important feature is this mortgage. So now if you have a second position HELOC for the equity between that mortgage that you owe and that HELOC isn't going so well, meaning the balance is excessive. Let's say you got a HELOC for hundred thousand dollars and you're sitting at right around 99,000 and you're late on payments and you're not moving that, that the home equity line of credit isn't functioning the way it should. Or let's say we've got a bank that we're going through uh, difficult economic times. Interest rates are high and they understand that this line of credit that's in this second position is a risky investment on their end. They are more likely to call a second position product due regardless of the product because they know that the likelihood or this, this secondary position product, the likelihood of you putting all of your efforts into addressing that are low. They realize that that item in first position, though, you will you will you will rob Peter to pay Paul to make sure your mortgage is paid before you rob Peter to pay Paul to make sure that second position home equity line of credit is paid, meaning they know that that item in first position is the most important. So the likelihood of they, them calling a second position product due or turning it from a HELOC to a loan is likely based off those circumstances that I've mentioned. But let's say you replace that mortgage. You get rid of the mortgage. The mortgage no longer exists. And in the place of that mortgage is a first position home equity line of credit. A first position, meaning the most important factor for the bank is that first position home equity line of credit because there is no mortgage. The likelihood of that bank calling that due is very low. Because if they call it due and we end up going through bankruptcy the, or we ended up short selling or we end up going through whatever the function is so that they can get their money, the likelihood of them actually getting that money is low. So the likelihood of them calling it due is I, I put it this way in the I'm not I'm not a super pro at this, but in the let's call it eight years that I've been working with first position HELOCs. I don't know of one client's first position HELOC being called due. In 2008, when the 2008 crash happened, 
when people say my HELOC was called due, again, based off my experience, so I'm going to say 99% of the people that I've talked to around that 2008 occurrence, we're talking about second position HELOCs, not first position. So, but a bank can do whatever a bank wants to do. Why? Because they don't care about you. So can a first position HELOC be called? I'm going to say, yeah, it can. But based off my data, based off the information I have, I see that as highly unlikely for those reasons that I just mentioned. A lot of words. Yeah. Are you, are you good? We have a couple more questions or we're at like over two hours now. So it's up to you. How about this? We'll be back on Sunday. Wednesday. That too. <laughs> we will. And, and that is why we are doing this twice a week, because we realize that once those wheels get turning, you go, I need access to ask these questions. And you should have access to ask these questions. And that's the whole reason why we're out here um, helping people. So uh, so if you want to rapid fire, that's fine. But, you know, I can't give you a rapid answer, a rapid fire response because I'll mean, get killed in the comments. You tell me, will a first position home equity line or will a HELOC be called due? And I say no. No, it won't. You have to have yeah. the context. I have to give you the backstory because it's not a yes or no response. So these yeah. are you can't rapid fire these questions. Go ahead. With yeah, and we do. We do. We have seemed to um, attract some haters. That's when you really know you've made it. By the way, on YouTube is when you have. I don't call them haters. I think when you have people that show up. Just to we, pick apart everything. But we've been conditioned. Say. We've been, con you're telling me that this strategy that I'm walking you through is somehow better than what 80, 90% of the world is doing. Like I am going against conventional thought. And yeah. because I'm going against conventional thought, that's conditioning. And that's where I think that's where you come into play. Like we're talking about usually those back and forth in the comments is mm -hmm. about mindset. Right. But it's not about strategy. It's about mindset. Go ahead. Right. They don't want to have that conversation. And I think if somebody, you can't help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. We have 71 people currently watching right now who are clearly, and they're probably sitting with other people who want to help themselves. Like they will, they're willing to invest the time to watch a live stream or to watch videos or whatever it is, download a velocity banking worksheet and go through and start putting their numbers together and taking steps to take action. But it first had to come from here for them to be willing to even be open-minded enough to learn something new and not just say, oh, well, just however it's going to shake out, I guess that's what's going to be for me. And some people are not willing to do that. They would much rather be proven right than be correct. Bars. <laughs> that's that's the, just, just the truth. Oh, I already had this comment up. With MPI, can you take out a loan against the death benefit like with whole life? So there's a lot. You leave it up if you don't mind. There, yeah. There's a lot in that question. And again, this is another one of those. I have to peel back the layers. I'm sorry. Um, so first off, when you take the participating loan inside of a cash value life insurance policy, I don't care what it is, whole life, variable life, universal life, index universal life, premium finance strategy like MPI, it doesn't matter. This applies to all. When you take a participating loan, you are borrowing. Uh, your, your, what hap what's happening is the life insurance company is using your cash value as collateral. That's number one. So when you borrow, when you take that participating loan, you're not actually borrowing against your death benefit. You're borrowing, the, you're, you're getting a dollar amount from the life insurance company and the life insurance company is using your um, cash value as collateral to allow you to be able to borrow against it. And so when you pay back that loan, because if you were borrowing against your death benefit, when you pay back the loan, you would be paying back your death benefit, but you're not. When you pay back the interest on that loan, that money goes to the life insurance company. So you're not actually in a whole life policy. You're not actually, um, um, okay, I'll call it borrowing from the death benefit, but you are leveraging, and again, words matter. So if you are saying that in the form of, hey, I'm leveraging against, then what you're saying is, yes, the life insurance company is using your death benefit as collateral to be able to offer you this loan. Then again, short answer to that question is yes. Can you do it? Yes. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about whole life, variable life, MPI, it doesn't matter. The same way you take a participating loan in a whole life policy is the exact same way you take a participating loan in a product like this. The difference is the leverage. 
You cannot add leverage inside of a whole life policy. You cannot add leverage inside of an IUL. This is different strictly because of that. And it's that leverage that allows you to produce two to three times more income compared to a whole life policy. So, a lot of workers. Yeah, Greg's saying, um, Angelique, there's something wrong with your worksheet. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes I think I fixed a few of them for people. So Greg, let me reach out to you and I'll, you can give me access if I need to go in there and help fix the cells. Or if you are, you're like, no, I know what I'm doing in here and the stuff's just jacked up. Then, but that's the feedback we need. Yeah, we do need that feedback because I'm definitely not an expert and I'm okay with that. But I think there's going to be somebody who, one, it does work for the majority of people, but some people have said like these cells don't work and I don't know why it suddenly breaks for some and, and it doesn't for others unless just there's not that many people telling me that it that the, that part's broken but greg do you have the upgraded version because if you don't then you're it's probably all jacked up at this point but yeah. yeah this is the feedback we need and i think it's less about hey this doesn't work i think we need specifics like hey when i put this dollar amount in this sale it's supposed to do this but it's not it's doing that like, yeah like it because because that's the only way we can we can fix it so and inside the group is the best place because then other people can jump in and say i had the same problem and that way i'm not addressing the same problem multiple you know times. Mul yeah multiple times yeah. okay lolo this um and then we have one more that i that was it's kind of a kind of an equation so we'll put that up after this um this may be a little bit out of your wheelhouse okay but any ideas on how to maximize an hsa account i'm contributing the annual max into a bank with 0 0.03 interest emoji <laughs> um so i can just flat out answer the question is there a way to maximize an hsa the cool part about an hsa is most of them do allow you to invest I'm going to call it self-directed, but not in the in the form of what we know as self-directed, meaning you can invest in non-traditional investments outside of the market. But an HSA does allow you to max it. You are building uh, the dollar amount in, in it being used is growing tax free. You can use the money tax free. I see the value of HSAs, so I don't want to discount that. Is there a way to maximize? It's active. You have to be active in knowing where to put it. And there are vehicles you can put them in, but they're all tied to the market. So it's as um, I'll call it uh, secure as most other market based investments, which we as we know, are not very secure. Um, but I do got to highlight that point zero three percent interest. Like, is that really doing anything like there are savings accounts that are better than that? Yeah, um, it's not now, an what can you do though. outside of that? Can you? Can you um, transfer that HSA into some other vehicle? You can, but if the HSA is meant to be used for medical needs, then you lose that capability. So the question is, can you grow that HSA elsewhere, make more money from that HSA and still use it for medical, uh, medical conditions? And because you've grown it more, it compensates for the loss of the, uh, I'll call it the tax-free use of, or against those medical bills. Like there's just a lot there. And um, so I, I guess the short answer to your question is, um, is there a way? Yes, there is. Are there vehicles? Yes, there are. Um, I don't, I'm not, I guess, 100% clear as to what those vehicles might be. But an HSA is really no different than any other qualified account. Be used the same way. Yeah, and I think a lot of people use these different tools because when you're at work and your HR department is like, well, here's what you can leverage. Yeah, these are the vehicles. One, right, one, to um, decrease your taxable income. That's one of the benefits that people look forward to, right? So that's kind of one of the hooks that kind of pull you into the system, not knowing what the fees are on the on the other end of that. They're, they're only telling you what the benefit is, and you're like, oh, pay less in taxes? Bet doing that. Then you'd learn, oh, well, what happened all my money? Well, there's we had to pay a bunch of people to uh, pretty much launder, legally launder your money. And, and how market. do you know if you're getting hit with the same fees? Any um, qualified account that requires support, custodial support, 
you are getting hit with those fees. HSAs require custodians to be able to um, uh, actively move your money. That cost of that custodian are the fees that's eating up that account. So yeah. the 401k, IRA, 403b, TSP, they are all in the same wheelhouse. And if you watch the retirement gamble, then it's, 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 it's my, my number one recommendation. It's, it's the recommendation of the year retirement gamble on YouTube. It's full documentary from PBS Frontline. It's a good one. Okay, here we go. This is the um, equation here and my eyes are starting to fatigue. So I'm- I got I'm, you. Okay. Uh, hi, just joined the chat. Uh, maybe late. 47,000 credit cards, 22,000 in auto loans, 43,000 home loans, credit, uh, credit limit utilization, credit limit utilization, 47 uh, of your Two, yeah, I guess that's the total. Oh, uh, income four thousand a month in income. Should I open a HELOC? Wait, um, wait. Ahead. There's a correction. Eight K in monthly income. Okay. Um, yeah. I think the short of it though is, should I open a HELOC? Those numbers actually aren't the numbers that I would be focused on as to whether or not you should or should open a HELOC. My question is, if we're talking about now, you just said HELOC, so I can run that two ways. Are we talking a first position HELOC, meaning in place of mortgage, get a first position HELOC? Or are we saying, hey, I have a home, I have a mortgage, I like my interest rate, can I get a second position HELOC? So there's a multitude of answers here. But still, I think my response is the same regardless. It's what's the goal? Like, what's the point? Like, you get a HELOC, got one, now what? Like, what is the ultimate goal for the use of this HELOC? Is it debt reduction? Is it the goal of building wealth? Is it a combination of both? So one, what's the goal? And then two, what's the position? Are we talking first and second? And then two, what are the interest rates? So do your homework. Let's, uh, I think step one is kind of, again, it, it, it goes back to our live around what are the steps? The first step is why are we here? What's the goal? What's the true goal? The second step is, are you paying yourself first? Do, are you already contributing to a vehicle where money is growing for you to put yourself in a position to generate wealth. So what's the goal? Pay yourself first. Do you know your numbers? You absolutely clearly obviously know your numbers. Um, and then from there, it's identifying what is that debt tool? The way you identify what that debt tool is, we have to understand what the position is uh, that you're trying to place yourself in to be able to access a debt tool, where we're using a credit card, a B-lock, a P-lock, home equity line of credit, first or second position. And in order to understand that, we got to really break down what are those interest rates. This is not a great time to be buying HELOCs. But the truth about that is there are some companies out there, there are some banks out there that want you to come in. So they are offering promo rates. You can get um, uh, first position or second position HELOCs that may be less than prime, maybe less than the uh, mortgage rate that you have. But if you have a low mortgage rate, would I want to substitute my two point whatever mortgage rate for a first position HELOC at seven? We we've done that video. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can justify it, but does it make sense? The math, it does not make sense. But if your goal requires you to take action like that, then take that action because that's based off your goal. You know, yeah. so again, it, there's a whole lot of factors here. It is not cut and dry. Yeah, just go do it. it. It just, it's not that simple. Well, in today's example, right, just to kind of full circle, today's example was where we took a couple who had very different ideas of how a situation should be handled. And one of those was pay off the mortgage uh, fast, as soon as they could, right, and use the money to do that and save $260,000, which is a lot of money, right? And then the other one said, no, let's, I want to focus on retirement income. Like, I want out of this job. I don't want to work anymore. This, I don't know what your plan, if your plan is to get me out this job, it doesn't sound like that. I'm not really that into it. I want to see how it's done my way. And so we showed the difference of the two and essentially, it up front, it makes it seem like why would you? It's a no brainer. Why would you pass up uh, $260,000? But in the long run, because she has a vision for what this goal looks like and she has her eyes locked in on this vision retirement income, tax free income for the rest of her life. She is not going to run out. There's nothing that can derail this plan. She is going to have it and she knows how much she's going to have. She is not going to end up like her parents, right? with this willy-nilly 
amount, whatever they decide is good enough for them by the time they reach retirement age. That's just, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit, right? <laughs> Who else has heard that before? <laughs> okay, point is we showed the difference there. $260,000 is essentially what she had to pay her buy-in in order to get well over a million dollars and $111,000 per year tax-free for the rest of her life. I think that that was well worth $260,000, but to some people it's not. So that's where, you know, sometimes we're reworking the math and we're uh, looking at situations a little bit differently. So on that note, we can do that though, because we understand how these strategies work and how they can be connected together, right? All five of these strategies that we talk about all, Donnell, you say they all talk, right? They all connect and they can all work together and how you, whatever your unique situation is when you understand how they work, not just that they're available, not just that they exist, but how they work, then you can start to go, well, hold on a second. I think I have access to something like that. I think that would work for me. And that's exactly what we want you guys to do is to start going, okay, what, which pieces, which wheels am I going to use inside of my machine, right? To connect together, to get it to turn. And so that is where we have come up with a ton of free resources. We're coming out with more all the time. And these resources will help you get educated. They are deep dives, deeper than we can go here on the live stream, some of them. We have an entire video series that breaks down all of these components, including your question about leverage, Michael. And you'll learn all of that in there. And on top of that, you get Donnell's Donnell's digits, you know? So if you have any questions while you're watching those videos or going through the books, we got two free books, any questions along the way, send them over to us as soon as possible so that we can get you those answers right then and there because we don't want to stall your progress either. Now, we can't always answer right away, but as soon as we can, we, you will have the answer from us. So on that note, I think now is a good, is a good time to show them where they can get those resources and wrap this up. So Let's do it. Our mantra is that if you don't come from a wealthy family, you can make sure a wealthy family comes from you. So stay focused. Stay connected. Stay tuned. Stay protected. My name's Angelique. And I'm Donnell. And our goal is to help you get self-directed. All right. Here's those resources, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. And we hope to see you on Wednesday. Thanks again. Hey, before you go, we want to remind you that becoming fully self-directed means gaining complete control over your wealth, time, and freedom. It's not just an idea. It's a framework, a mindset, and the power to make informed decisions to secure your future. Being here means you're taking those steps, and we want to thank you for allowing us to guide you. We believe that we grow farther and faster when we grow together. So tune in next time and tell a friend to tell a friend. We've helped thousands of people just like you start their journey to financial freedom. And if they can do it, you can too. And if you're ready to learn more, we got you. Get a head start by grabbing these two free books. But how do they get them, Donnell? Head over to my website where you'll have access to a few things. A ton of free resources, case studies, and over 100 five-star reviews from people just like you. And in 15 minutes, we can explore what's possible for you. So don't wait. Invest, Invest in what, what you want, want, when you want. But first, let us help you get, get self-directed.